14-point loss to the Muncie South Rebels. They will stack them up like this under coach Mike Lavelle. Number one is Kevon Lewis, a 5'10 junior and guard. He'll be joined by Nate Hillary at number three. He's 6'2 and a junior and guard. Down low to be Deontay Eldridge, number 22, a 6'4 junior and forward. He'll be joined down low by Robert Littlejohn, number 30, or check that, Jerron Lewis, number 40, a 6'7 junior. And apparently they're going to go with a three-guard set as they list Dan McBride, number 32, a 6'2 senior guard. So once again for the uh, Redskins, it'll be Lewis, Hillary, and McBride in the backcourt, a three-guard set. Down low, Jerron Lewis, Deontay Eldridge for the Redskins. And, of course, the coach, Mike Novell, in his fifth season here at Northside. Columbia City, pretty much what we're accustomed to so far. In the backcourt of number four, Trevor Shively, 5'11 and a sophomore. That's Tyler Shively, Andy. Did I say Trevor? Yes, you did. That's all right, though. <laughs> I wonder how many times that's going to happen. That's only the season. first time this year, so I'll let it fly. I but... called your name many a time, but I can't get it out of my system. Now, the next thing I'll probably say is Trent Shively. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. Yeah. Well, anyway, you know you know the deal. The uh, broadcaster may be nuts, but you know the Shively. <laughs> so does Tyler Shively, 5'11 and a sophomore. He starts in the backcourt along with... Uh, Matt Coffin, number 22, 5'11 and a senior. He'll be joined by Dan Schmidt, also number 12, a 5'11 senior. Down low, big Zach Coverstone at 6'7 and a forward. And he'll wear uh, 50, as I said, 52 is Travis Preston, 6'3 and a junior. So pretty much what we're accustomed to, Shively, Schmidt, Coffin, Coverstone, and Preston. And, of course, Chris Benedict in his ninth season at Columbia City. And we're about ready to go. Columbia City in the predominantly road black jerseys, white numerals, gold trim. And north side, the home predominantly white with the red numerals and the red trim of the Redskins. Coverstone to jump center against Deontay Eldridge. 6-7 against 6-4. Columbia City will work it uh, left to right. North side, right to left. And the ball is in the air. And yes, it is. And it's half is controlled by Columbia City. And back off it. Has run away at Pi Hay Arena at north side. High on the left side, Schmidt. Top of the key for Shively. High on the right wing now, Kaufman. Back up top, Schmidt. Columbia City pace it right off the bat. Dan Schmidt. High on the right side, up top, Kaufman. Ooh, they almost had him for that three. Now he penetrates. Kicks it to Tyler Shively. Long three. Ooh, a little long. Rebound, Kaufman. Kaufman gets it out. Preston from 15. Scores! Great shot by Travis Preston, about a 15-foot jump shot, but it all started when Matt Kaufman crashed the boards and got the offensive rebound. Nice hustle by Kaufman. North side back. High on the right side. They throw it away as Nate Hillary couldn't handle it. Turn over north side. 2-0 Eagles with 7-2-2 to go first quarter. So CC off to a good start this far. Have an unforced turnover for north side. As Dan Smith works it across the midcourt strike. High on the left side, he's guarded closely by Lewis to the Redskins. Kaufman, deep left, Coverstone way up top, and Shively. Shively will work around the key left, can't find a man there. He spins back right, bounces Coverstone at the elbow, hands back, Shively along, three. Ooh, just off the mark. Coverstone the rebound, put back, no, but a north side foul. Another offensive rebound by the Eagles. Shively's taken two quick threes, which have been fairly good shots, but they're not falling, but good job by Columbia City. Matt Kaufman on the first shot, and now Zach Coverstone to crash the board, get the offensive rebound. And the north side foul, uh, Jerron Lewis, his first, team first. One minute gone in this one, 2 nothing Eagles. Zach Coverstone to the charity stripe. Score, 3 nothing Eagles. Zach's a very good free throw shooter for being 6'7". You really don't oh, see yeah. a lot of big guys that have that kind of touch from the foul line. Yes, indeed, Trevor. And Coverstone again, 4 nothing Eagles. Minute gone. And here they come, Jerron Lewis. Lead pass ahead, now Hillary crosses the timeline. Kicks it off left corner, and it's going to be McBride over there. Now up top, Lewis. He penetrates, forces it in the corner to Hillary. And Lewis up top again. He shakes it, bakes, forces a three. That's off the mark. Back iron, Kaufman the rebound. Gets it out of traffic. Schmidt serves it to the midcourt stripe. Preston up top, high left, Kaufman. Kaufman up top, Shively. Shively penetrates down the lane. Kicks it to Preston, baseline corner to Kaufman. Now beyond the arc, left wing. Kaufman spins in, gets a pass to Coverstone to the bucket, scores the layup. Great penetration by Matt Coffin to get the ball through the middle of the floor, draw the defense in, and then kick it out to Zach Coverstone for the layup. 6 nothing Eagle. Minute 45 going in this one. Kevon Lewis up top now for McBride. McBride of the Redskins. 
Take the Bakes almost travels with it. Lewis high on the right side. Looks in for the arc. Green step by Eldridge. He can't get around it. Now up top. The three on the way by McBride. Wall back iron at the brick. North side to lose ball and no further play at Columbia City. Foul on the floor. Columbia City failed to block out on that three-point attempt, and that's one of the things Columbia City really needs to learn and worry about a little bit is that when the opposing team shoots a lot of threes, there's going to be long rebounds, and you have to put an even greater emphasis on blocking out. Okay, so the first foul for Columbia City goes against Tyler Shively. Team first. And up top, Kevon Lewis tries to penetrate. Shively almost got it away from him, and Hillary out top. They reset. McBride up top. Now Lewis down low. They bounce it into the big man, turn around on the baseline. Off the mark, no good by Eldridge. Rebound, Coverstone. Here come the Eagles. They lead 6 nothing. Great rebound by Zach Coverstone. Crashed the boards again. Up top, Coverstone. Down low, Preston. He had a move, and now he's all tied up. Gets it out to Sibley. And Tyler penetrates the lane. Nice pass down low. Coverstone to the bucket. Layup score. Great offensive possession by Columbia City. They got great ball movement, and Tyler Shively drove the lane, just as Matt Coffin did earlier, and just dumped it down into Zach Coverstone for the layup. So the Eagles are up 8 nothing, and offensively they're playing very well. They're getting great ball movement, which is what we talked about earlier. They're also getting the ball inside to Zach Coverstone, which is also what we talked about earlier. So the Eagles coming out, playing hard defensively, and getting good ball movement offensively, Andy. All right. Well, I'll tell you about some underwriters where we've got a chance. I think this is a 30. Coldwell Banker, your perfect partner. When you're buying or selling a home, remember your perfect partner, Coldwell Banker, Scott Darling. Telephone 248-9738. That's Scott Darling, Coldwell Banker. At 248-9738. Looks as though this might... No, it's going to be a 30, I guess. There goes the buzzer. So we'll hold it right there. Excellent start for the Eagles here tonight. Yes, it was. And uh, Columbia City in their trademark man-to-man defense so far. And they're playing very good defensively. They're grabbing rebounds. Zach Coverstone has kind of been the story so far. He's got a couple rebounds, a couple baskets. And uh, he's playing very well. And Columbia City offensively getting good ball movement. Like Northside's got a substitution or two in. We'll try to pick that up. Number two, Andrew Smother, six foot junior. He comes in, almost stolen away by Columbia City. Interesting. You bring up the substitutions. It looks like number thirty, Ashante Jones, is going to check into the ball game. Now, I really yeah, don't I, know why he didn't start. I don't know if it was maybe there was a discipline. Exactly. Being exactly. Or? So uh, Columbia City up eight nothing without Ashante Jones in the game so far, but he has checked in. And the aforementioned Ashante Jones tosses it in now to Smother. Smothers high on the right side, back to Jones around his man on the baseline, all the way in. Layup, no, but a Columbia City foul, and will he shoot two? I think so. I think that foul's going to be on Zach Coverstone. And what happened there was Columbia City set up in a 1-3-1 defense when when Northside took the ball out of bounds. That's something that Coach Minnick likes to do. Columbia City set up in a 1-3-1 defense, and Jones just caught the ball on the wing and just ripped the baseline, went hard to the basket, and drew the foul. So the sophomore, Ashante Jones, rims it in, and Northside's on the board. 8-1. 5-14 to go first quarter here at Bay Hay Arena. So Jones will try it again. The foul was on Coverstone, as Trevor mentioned. That one's no good. Rebound on Northside. They put it up. No. Loose ball. Northside gets it out of a scramble. Turn around by Trowbridge. Scores. A bank fell off the glass. Let me see. You've got to do a better job blocking out. And now it looks like Northside is going to set up in a man-to-man press. 8-3. to three. Five minutes for the first quarter. Dan Smith up the right side into the front court. Preston right corner. Preston knocked off the play. It's off of Preston. Out of bounds. All of a sudden, they rattled a little bit. Yeah, Columbia City just needs to play within themselves. It looked like Travis Preston got a little bit too far out on the floor. Travis plays best inside in the post. and just got a little bit too far out on the floor. So Smothers up top for north side. Top of the key. He'll run the show. He'll come right. And Smothers over in the corner of Shante Jones. Back to Smothers up top. He'll reverse the left side now. And they can't get the shot off over there. Smothers drives it down on the right side. He lost the handle. We're going to stay off of Columbia City. Look at the uh, native wrestle behind the basket. As far as the Columbia City folks are concerned. Columbia City's still in the man-to-man defense. Shante Jones lobs it in. Little John puts it up short. Coverstone yanks the rebound down. Here comes Kaufman across the time. I lost the handle. Schmidt saves it. Almost knocked down. Needs some help. Gets it to Coverstone and back to Schmidt. Schmidt dancing around that midcourt line. Penetrates. Kicks it out to Kaufman. Now left wing Schmidt. Schmidt with a step over there around his band of the baseline. Now cut off over there by Trowbridge. Now down low Coverstone. Backs in. Can't get the move. Now Schmidt deep left corner for three. Ooh, off the mark. Rebound Shively. Shively among the trees. Puts it up. Scores a runner down the lane. Great job by Tyler Shively to grab the offensive rebound. He went inside with the big guys. Just laid it in. Good job by Tyler Shively. Jones back for north side. Outside the arc. 10-3 Columbia City. 
The shot they Jones loads it up from downtown. Good, he rattles it home a three. Matt Kaufman's got to get out sooner on Shante Jones. He gave him too much room there, and Jones knocked it down. We talked about how he's a very good offensive player. we got to get out sooner on him. 10-6. 3.35 for the first. Schmidt high on the right side. Can't find a man. Better get rid of it up top. Now Preston. Dan Schmidt resets up top. He's bothered heavily by Smothers on the defense. Kaufman high on the left wing. Looks down low to Coverstone. They've got him. He's hammered. Oh, and he puts the shot up. No call. Turn around. This time they get a north side foul. Another offensive rebound for Zach Coverstone. That time Zach missed his first attempt, stayed with it, got the rebound again, went up, got fouled. Great post speed there by Matt Kaufman. Coverstone had his mail sealed. Kaufman got him the ball. Now Coverstone's going to line for two free throws. So 3.23 to go first quarter. 10-6 Columbia City. Coverstone fires and scores. 11-6 Columbia City. First up for the Eagles as Cam Bailey comes in for Travis Preston. And Coverstone will have another one. The north side foul is on Robert Littlejohn, his first team second. <laughs> Coverstone again, 12-6 Eagles. Columbia City going to put a little pressure on Littlejohn. Ahead to Shante Jones. Shante Jones dances around, finally lobs it across now to Polk. And check that. It's going to be uh, Jones. Up top now to Smethers. Smethers calls the play. Columbia City drops back in a 2-3 zone. And we'll see what Northside does with that. Polk up top now Smethers. Wide on the right side. Jones makes the move in the baseline. Kicks a nice pass down low to the bucket. Throw bread. Misses it. Coverstone rips out. And a Northside foul. Great rebound by Zach Coverstone. He brought it down. Drew the foul. Jones had a good penetration there. Kicked off to his teammate who just could not finish. So I've been uh, pretty impressed with Jones so far, Andy. He yep. played pretty well since he got in the game. Trowbridge missed a bunny, and Coverstone ripped it down. Full court pressure put on by the Redskins with 2.55 to go first quarter. Into Tyler Shively. He's around one. Set sample to midcourt stripe off to Bailey. High up top now. Dan Schmidt resets. He's bothered by Jones on the defense. And an old backdoor pass. They threw that one away. And Northside just got away with a travel, but... Uh, that's off of Columbia City out of bounds. As you said, that was a backdoor pass by Dan Schmidt. That was a set play that Columbia City runs a lot against aggressive defensive teams. And that time, the defense was ready for it and picked off the pass and came the other way. Now low, they get it to Trowbridge. He makes the move into the paint. Ooh, he got away with one under there. Now Falks makes the move, penetrates, kicks it up top, and they're back to Smothers all the way around. Jones high right side for three. Off the mark. Rebound. The rips are down. Bailey's got a hold of it. He got it out of the scramble. He got elbowed in the head, but we go the other way. We pass that Coffin high to right side. Down low, Coverstone, easy layup, score! Great job by the Eagles to get the ball out in transition, and great job by Zach Coverstone to run the floor, and he got rewarded for it. He got an open layup. Falk, high on the left side, around one, puts it in, down low, Trollbread to Bunny, Coverstone with the block! Oh. Coverstone comes up big, Dan Schmidt the other way. Up top, Kaufman, high to left side, Bailey. Into the corner now, Shively. Danny Schmidt back up top, under two for the first. Schmidt penetrates, kicks it off. Bailey from 18, right corner, short, rebound, north side. Smothers out of the scramble with it, across the timeline, deep left corner, Falk puts it up, he launches a long three, touchdown, 14-9. Once again, Columbia City's got to get out on the shooters. That time, Tyler Shively was just a little bit late getting out on the shooters. They just got to do a better job of getting out quicker. Schmidt, high on the left side, Shively with room, step on the baseline, goes in among the trees, and he travels. Good penetration by Shively, but what he needs to do there is he needs to jump stop, get himself under control, and then maybe give a shot fake, go up, try to get fouled, and go to the free throw line. He just hurried a little bit. It was a good penetration, but he was just in, a, in too big of a hurry. All right, some subs in the ball game here. Matt Curry in for Columbia City. Travis Preston returns as well. Cover stone to the bench along with Shively. Now north side, Falk penetrates the lane, pulls up for 14, a brick. Rebound batted around. Oh, my. Columbia City had it, but they got a trip. Northside misses a bunny, but Falker checked that. They're going to give the tip into Little John, I think. Coverstone's first possession out of the game. Northside gets two offensive rebounds. So uh, I think it's obvious that we really need Coverstone back in the game, but he's just getting a quick break with only a minute left in the first quarter, and he has one foul. So I understand Coach Benedict's reasoning and take him out of the game with only a minute left in the yeah. first quarter so he doesn't get another foul. Northside foul in the backcourt goes against Jones, his first team fourth. Columbia City ball out of bounds. Full court press being put on to get it into Schmidt. Schmidt with room. Going to weasel across the timeline, strip from behind. He loses the handle. Kaufman has it back. Columbia City with numbers down low, but they're not. Now Kaufman loads it up for a long three. Off the mark, a little strong. And north side, the rebound to Ron Lewis. Lead pass ahead, some others. Streaks into the front court. Top of the key, high left side, Falk. 
Tries to penetrate the baseline, shakes and bakes. Nice pass across. Play a score, little con. Great penetration by Paul. She drew the defense in. Dish it off to his teammate for the layup. Columbia State needs to do a better job of passing to break the press instead of dribbling. 14-13 Eagles. 35 seconds for the first quarter. Dan Schmidt up top. Lobs it over the right side. Uh, Bailey to Kaufman in the corner. Up the wing. Schmidt, dangerous pass. Almost stolen. Kaufman doesn't take that shot. Columbia City will probably play for one. With 20 seconds to go in the first. They lead it by a point. North side with a flurry. Dan Schmidt holds out top of 14. Down the right side he dribbles. Up top now to Kaufman. High on the left side with five seconds. Shively from 15. Left baseline. That's a little strong. Or check that. That was Curry. Lead pass ahead. Smothered. One second. Three on the way. Air ball at the buzzer. Columbia City got a good look at the basket by Matt Curry at the end of the quarter. Just didn't get the ball. Overall, a good quarter by Columbia City. Obviously one of the main bright spots once again for the Eagles, Zach Coverstone. Yep. Dominant on both ends of the floor, getting offensive rebounds, getting defensive rebounds. He had a block shot. Coverstone played very well. All right, we'll talk to you about a couple underwriters here. McGregor Furniture in downtown Columbia City featuring Royal Bedroom, dining room, and living room furniture. Cat Napper recliners and wolf bedding are also available at McGregor Furniture in downtown Columbia City. Telephone 244. 7352. Farm Bureau Insurance. For all of your insurance needs, give Dustin Pease, Lauren Fry, or Chuck Springer a call at 244 6179 or stop by their Gateway Park location just off Highway 30 in Columbia City. That's Farm Bureau Insurance at 244 6179. Contact an Horizon Real Estate agent for all of your real estate needs, <laughs> residential, commercial, appraisals, and relocation. Call toll free 1 800 853 5916 or 248 8961. Serving the Whitley, Allen, and Noble County areas. Horizon Real Estate. Well, we've had an exciting first quarter, Trevor. 14-13, Columbia City jumped out to an 8 nothing lead, so the Redskins get back in it a little bit. Offensively, I really liked what Columbia City did. They got good ball movement. However, defensively, we need to do a better job of getting out on shooters and getting a hand up, and also a better job of blocking out. We gave up a couple offensive rebounds that really hurt us, so if they can get out quicker on shooters and do a better job of blocking out, we should be all right. Offensively, we looked very good, though. Good ball movement. Got the ball inside the Coverstone several times. We were very successful. Coverstone's back along with Preston. Schmidt, Kaufman, and Shively. Original starters for Columbia City. 14-13. I think they're ready to go now. And they lob it in. The Redskins with possession. Keyshawn Lewis across the timeline now. Northside looking for their first lead of the night here. Dan Lewis into the left corner. Cut off nicely, and up top it's uh, Folks. Folks back to Lewis. High on the right side. Down low to baseline of Shante Jones. Backs in on Kaufman. Puts it up. Doesn't get the roll. Rebound, no. Coverstone at him, but he's ripped away and travel on north side as they went for the rebound. Northside's oh, north side really crashing the boards hard that time. There was a kind of a tie-up, and uh, number 34 for north side got called for the foul. Got called for the travel. Little John. So Columbia City, is north side's going to pick him up full court here. Schmidt. And not a good place to pick up his dribble. Now he got it across. Preston bounces it off to Kaufman high on the right side. Schmidt up top. Schmidt tries to penetrate, kicks it off to Kaufman, back to Schmidt. Coverstone floats down low. They look for him. Schmidt top of the key. 40 seconds gone in the second. Columbia City by a point. Schmidt off now to Kaufman. Back to Schmidt. Northside kind of in a what? I think they're in a 2-3 zone right now. Three on the way. Deep left corner by Kaufman. That's off the mark. Rebound Jones. Good look by Kaufman. Just couldn't get his ball. No further play. Palming violation on Ashante Jones. That's one you really don't see called very much, no. but it was, it was, it did happen. He palmed the ball, he carried it, but obviously you don't see it called very much, and Northside fans really don't like it, but he did carry the basketball. Seven minutes for the second quarter, 14-13, Columbia City over Northside. Dan Smith uh, doesn't have it across yet. Finally gets across Tyler Shively high on the left side. He's got room, penetrates, puts it up off the glass, scores! Great job by Tyler Shively to catch the ball, penetrate. Oh, they, didn't, they didn't get back at an easy layup by DeAndre Falk. That'll make Coach Benedict. Yeah. Here comes Got to get off. back on defense. Oh, my. So, 16-15 Eagles now. Schmidt gets it across to Preston. Hands back off to Schmidt. He's guarded by Falk with six and a half to go in the second. Uh, Schmidt penetrates, kicks it off to Shively, left corner. Shively up around top. Kaufman can't get the shot off. Shively up top, left side Schmidt. Now Shively. Top of the key, he'll move it right. <laughs> and he needs help. Gets it off to Kaufman. Knocked away by Northside into the bleachers. One thing Columbia City needs 
They've done several times in the second quarter, and they're going to have to work on a little bit is picking up their dribble. They've picked up their dribble several times. They need to do a better job of continuing to keep their dribble so they can make better passes. So Dan Smith to trigger it out of the far right corner for the Eagles. They lead at 16 16 10 to go second quarter. And they don't have anybody yet. Finally get it all the way across left side to Kaufman. Up top, Dan Schmidt. As he works near the midcourt stripe, penetrates down the lane. Cut off. Now Kaufman at the arc. Left side. Preston at the right elbow. Kicks up Dan Schmidt. Loads it up for three. That's long. I don't think you can see the sight line very well. North side, back. Lewis. Cross the timeline. Penetrates. Shakes the bakes in the lane. Down low. Little John. Layup score. Columbia City's got to do a better job of stopping penetration because when North side gets in the lane, they have a better chance of either scoring or passing to a teammate and get a score. they got to do a better job of stopping penetration. 17-16. Smith. Wally pass, Coverstone behind everybody, home run, they great, score. Great pass by Dan Schmidt, got the ball up ahead to Zach Coverstone for the layup. Oh, back quickly, they throw it down low, easy layup, score, as it's going to be Little John. Time out, Columbia City, Coach Benedict seen it up for that, easy layup. Defensively, Columbia City. Columbia City needs to do a much better job of getting back on defense. This north side ball club is very athletic. They're getting up and down the floor very quick. We're doing very well offensively, but after we score, we've got to do a better job of getting back on defense. And I think that's what Coach Bennett is telling the guys. He's telling them we're going to have to hustle back on defense. And then when we do get back on defense, we're going to have to stop penetration because north side's guards are doing a very good job of getting in the lane, drawing the defense, and then passing it down inside to their big postmen for the left. Family Support Services of Northern Indiana offers individual, marriage, fam- and family counseling, along with professional Christian counseling. Call Family Support Services of Northern Indiana, 244-0057. As we sit at 19-18, it looks like a quick 30-second timeout here by Columbia City. Coach Benedict had his uh, rather uh, brief say, but I'm sure it was uh, to the point. They lose trail at 19-18 to Northrop, or North Side. <laughs> Grief. Where do I get Northrop? I don't know. I don't, don't know. Go, we don't play them until February 1st. <laughs> At least you got the uh, schedule memorized. You know exactly when we're playing. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Northside to break there. I don't going to wipe up a little. Looks like the manager spilled a little bit of the water bottles over there. So we're going to have a lengthy delay. Get that new floor cleaned up over there. Yeah. Still about a half a crate of water bottles. <laughs> so that does not go over well. And the new by hay floor gets a uh, quick bath. One of the things that north side when they started playing better was when ashante jones checked in the game as we talked about earlier you know for whatever reasons we don't know jones did not start the game but when he came in it really gave north side a lot more energy he was aggressive offensively and defensively and it really picked up the whole north side ball club and they started playing a lot better so it was very big to get jones in the game so meanwhile they check on that uh Rather large water spill at uh, center court. Looks as though they're even wiping off the chalkboard or something over there. That got a little water on it. Nothing to add a little uh, something else to the broadcast and to the game. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, the main thing is if they get it cleaned up, you want, obviously, great safety yeah. for the players. You really want it to get cleaned up. So uh, they're doing a good job cleaning up, and we should have some basketball coming your way pretty soon here. <laughs> a little bit of everything at these games sometimes. and. Uh, all part of it. They're still going to... Uh, Looks like their athletic director is out there getting involved now. I wonder if the uh, manager might, uh, might be wanting to hide or go fill the water bottle. Yeah, exactly. Fill the water bottle quickly. Exactly. And, you know, these things happen. You know, 30-second yeah. 30 second, 30 second timeout, teams are going to huddle on the floor. And, you know, it, it's going to happen every once in a while. But uh looks right. like they're getting it cleaned up, hopefully. Trying to rush around, get everybody a drink. Exactly. 30 seconds. That's exactly. not an easy task, I'm sure. So apparently that's all taken care of, and we're ready for basketball. Northside back in their 1-2-2 press. It's giving the Eagles a little bit of problem. <laughs> all right. Excuse me. Dan Schmidt with it. As they're going to try to trap him at midcourt, and they've got him all bottled up. Finally gets it across the cover stone. Nice job. Columbia City has it. Tyler Stradley high left. Schmidt down uh, in the middle, and now he has it up top again. Interior feed cover stone at the right elbow. Back to Kaufman. Kaufman almost had it stolen. Kaufman high right up top Schmidt. Left side, Scheibel. Up top to Dan Schmidt, under five of the second. Preston had room at free throw. I'm going to kick to the Coverstone instead. Step on the baseline. Layup scores. Zach Coverstone again. Great drive by Zach Coverstone. Used his body very well. Sealed himself to the fender. Went up. Knocked down the layup. Falk back high to left side. Down low. They get it to Little John. He can't make the shot. 
or make the play anyway. Back out top, Lewis. He penetrates, cut off nicely by Schmidt. And here comes Falk, streaking into the middle, out of control, lots it up. No good. That's a brick rebound cover, so he got clobbered on the play, but we go the other way. Connor Shively across the timeline. He's almost knocked down. Now Coffin with it. High left. Schmidt with room all day. Now up top, Coverstone. Back to Shively. Ooh, left side. Schmidt almost stolen. Schmidt with a step. 17-footer. Scores on the left wing. Great job by Dan Schmidt to catch the ball, gather himself, take one dribble, pull up, knock down the shot. Lewis back to the top of the key. North side. Penetrates. Lewis cut off nicely by Preston. Now Little John to the bucket. Wild runner on the way. Gets the roll. Great move by Ashante Jones. He drove middle. Fun move, went up for the pull-up jump shot, about a 12-footer. Good move by Shante Jones. I've been very impressed with his play so far. Correction, Jones on the bucket, not Little John. Trevor still has good eyes. I don't. <laughs> 22-21. Downtown three by Shively. That's way off the mark. Rebound. Out of there to Little John. Lead pass ahead and to the bucket. Folks, no further play at Columbia City foul. Okay. Shively had a good look at a three-pointer. He didn't knock it down, however... When he doesn't knock down a shot, he's got to do a better job of getting back on defense. That time, he was a little slow getting back, and his man defensively caught the ball, got a drive towards the basket, and he committed the foul. So he needs to do a little bit better job of hustling back, whether he makes a shot or misses a shot. So Tyler Shively, Shively second, Columbia City third team foul. End of free throw line, false. He misses it. Go 22-21, Eagle. 3.36 to go, second quarter. Substitution, Deontay Eldridge back into the north, uh, north side lineup. I almost said Northrop again. Where am I getting that? <laughs> so, uh, Fultz again. they try to hit the back end of the two-shot foul. No good. No, he got the roll. What a roll. That hit about a mile high in the air and fell in. Shooter's bounce right there. Got the roll. 22-22. Another sub back in. I think Little John has returned. No, Lewis has. Coffin across the timeline, no. Back to Schmidt. Now we're not across yet. Now across the cover stone. Up top, Coffman. Shively flashes down there. Coffin from downtown. Short on the three. They can't hit on the threes. Jones down low. Playoff scores. They need it back. Once again, Columbia City fails to get back on defense. It's a very athletic north side team. We've got to do a better job, as I already said, getting back on defense. It's hurt them several times. 24-22 as Eldridge got it almost stolen. Schmidt saves the bacon, though. Up top to Shively. Sidley penetrates into the paint. He's mugged. Now up top, Coffin. Left side, Smith. Into the corner, Sidley. Sidley will try to penetrate. Can't get around his man, which is Lewis. Now Coffin way out top. Smith lost the handle, got it back. And Coffin with it. And he, oh, nice pass down low. Cover stone, easy layup again. They lost it. Great pass by Matt Coffin. Once again, he just drove the lane. Through the defense, pass over Zach Coverstone for the layup. He's, or even at 24 is an easy one. Coffin steals. Hoffman hits the deck. Stolen back by Northside. Scramble. Columbia City almost steals it. Now Northside back with it. Down low. they got a man wide on the left side. To the bucket. Blocked by Coverstone. No, Great. it's off the north side. Good defense by Matt Coffin. What happened that time was Jones tried to cross over in front of Coffin. He just got a hand out, stole it, and there was a loose ball. And Columbia City eventually ends up with the ball. 2.24 to go in the second. 24-24 our score. Dan Smith brings it across the midcourt stripe. Eventually, now he does. He's guarded by Jones. Left side, big Zach Coverstone. Bounces to Preston up top. Left side, Kaufman. Kaufman pump fakes the three down low. Coverstone to the bucket. Oh, he doesn't get the roll this time. Good look by Coverstone. Just couldn't get the ball. We pass ahead. Jones. Jones around one into the paint. Wild runner. Score. Bounce in. Another great athletic move by Jones. He's getting in the middle of the floor. He's driving the basket. He's getting some good shots, and he's getting them fall right now. 26-24, minute 50 to go and a half. Tyler Shively, left side, high. Dan Smith in the middle, cover stone. <laughs> Up top now, Dan Smith. High on the left side now for Kaufman. Kaufman tries to get around his man. And he can get shot off down low, cover stone in the paint. Backs in on his man. Kicks it off wide open. Shively layup score. Great. Backdoor cut by Tyler Shively and good recognition by Zach Coverstone to get the ball to him for the layup. 26 apiece, 120 to go in the half. Down low they get it, backing in through the bucket, turn around, scoring is Eldridge. A little 10 footer in the lane. 28 26 north side. Dan Smith back across the midcourt stripe. Redskins by two over the Eagles. Dan Smith down the left side. Can't find a man. Up top, Kaufman. Smith up top. One minute to go in the first half. Oh, Schmidt traveled. Up top, Coverstone. 
They didn't get him, though. Coverstone, high left. Back up top, Kaufman. Dangerous pass. North side, very quick. Kaufman. Will we play for one? Coverstone up top, left side now, Kaufman. From center in the arc, Tyler Shively up top, fought long and hard about that three. Pulls it down to Coverstone. Stolen! See a breakaway. Lamp score. Play of Doug Eldridge. For 30 seconds. Tyler Shively just drove the lane that time, tried to get the ball to Coverstone. Good job by the north side defense to anticipate the pass, steal it, and go the other way for the dunk. 20 seconds to go and a half. Dan Smith up top. And he needs a man. Doesn't have anybody yet. Gets it to Shively. Finally knocked away. Stolen by north side. 2 0 break. And going to be Keyshawn Lewis layup score. Ten seconds for the Eagles. Smith gets it into Coverstone with six. Coverstone's going to drive it across the midcourt stripe. All the way to the bucket. Knocked away from behind. He puts it up. Oh, he's blocked from behind. No call. And that's going to do it for the half. Coach Benedict caught on his way off the floor. Yeah, Coach Benedict really is not happy with this team's play at the end of the first half. And as you said, he's kind of talking to the officials right now. That time, Zach Coverstone had a good look at the basket. And a north side defender came from behind. And from where it looked from our angle, kind of got him from behind. It should have been a foul, but wasn't called for whatever reason. However, Coach Benedict is probably not very happy with how the Eagles ended the first half. We looked very fluttered at the end of the first half. We had several turnovers that led to very easy baskets by Northside. And kind of what Columbia City is going to have to do when they come out for the second half half is they're going to have to just slow down a little bit. They're going to have to just try to slow down the tempo of the game. As we've already said several times, Northside has a very athletic ball club. Columbia City right now, we're trying to run up and down the floor with them, which is very uncharacteristic of one of Coach Benedict's teams. However, we're going to have to come out in the second half, slow down a little bit, do a better job of taking care of the basketball, and then once we do score offensively, we're going to have to do a better job of getting back on defense because of Northside's athleticism. Okay, halftime is uh, here. 32-26, Northside over Columbia City. And we'll talk to you about our underwriters once again. McGregor Furniture in downtown Columbia City featuring Royal Bedroom, Dining Room, and Living Room Furniture. Cat and Apple Recliners and Wolf Bedding are also available at McGregor Furniture in downtown Columbia City. Telephone 244-7352. Farm Bureau Insurance. For all of your insurance needs, give Dustin Pease, Warren Fryer, Chuck Springer a call 244-6179. Or stop by the Gateway Park location just off of Highway 30 in Columbia City. Farm Bureau Insurance at 244-6179. Contact the Horizon Real Estate Agent for all of your real estate needs, residential, commercial, appraisals, and relocation. Call toll-free 1-800-853-5916 or 248-8961 serving the Wentley, Allen, and Noble County areas of Horizon Real Estate. Meyer, Tyson, Akamire, McNagney, Attorneys at Law. We make it our business to provide legal services to individuals and businesses of Wentley County from offices in downtown Columbia City. That's uh, Meyer, Tyson, Akamire, McNagney, Attorneys at Law. If you have a legal concern, make it our business. Come see the exciting new General Motors cars, trucks, vans, and sport utilities at Thompson's Whitley County Motors, Highway 30, Columbia City. Thompson's and General Motors proud supporters of Columbia City sports for a long, long time. Family Support Services of Northern Indiana offers individual, marriage, and family counseling along with professional Christian counseling. Call Family Support Services at 244-0057. Star Financial Bank, a full-service bank with two branches in Columbia City and branches throughout Northeast Indiana. Star Financial Bank for both consumer and business loans at 248-6000. Coldwell Banker, your perfect partner when you're buying or selling at home. Remember, your perfect partner at Coldwell Banker is Scott Darley. Telephone 248-9738. That's Scott Darley and Coldwell Banker at 248-9738. My partner's on his way to get some statistics for you guys. First half statistics. He'll be back in a little bit, so I'm going to talk a little bit once more about what Columbia City is going to need to do in the second half in order to come from behind and beat the Northside Redskins on the uh, dedication of their new gym tonight. Columbia City obviously has got to get back on defense sooner. As we've already said several times, Northside, very athletic. Columbia City's got to do a better job of getting back on defense. And then when we do get back on defense, the other thing that we're going to have to work on a little bit in the second half is shutting down the penetration that Northside has. Offensively, I was very pleased with what Columbia City did. We got good ball movement. We got good looks at the basket. Coverstone had several offensive rebounds. I thought Matt Kaufman, although he did not knock down, you know, three pointers like he normally does, he did a great job of post beating inside the Coverstone. So even though Kaufman didn't really do a lot of scoring offensively, he did a good job of entering the ball into Coverstone. Did had a couple offensive rebounds. So I thought Kaufman overall played a pretty good first half. 
And uh, obviously, Culverstone had several offensive rebounds, did pretty well in the first half. So, uh, Andy, are we going to have some stats on the way? or? Yeah, we'll have them uh, on the way momentarily as our statisticians get to work down there. And uh, Joe Cott and uh, Levi Canock providing our statistics tonight. And uh, we'll have those momentarily for you. And uh, we've got a good one here, 32-26. The Eagles kind of let it get away there at the end of the half, but uh, I'm sure the adjustments will be made. Yeah, so. Coach Benick, you know, he's always been a very good coach at halftime, making adjustments, whatever Columbia City is going to need to do, whether that be change defenses, whether that be have somebody else guard Jones. You know, Coach Benick is going to make adjustments that he feels will help Columbia City come from behind in the second half and pull it out. So uh, one of the other things that I haven't really talked a lot about that I thought was a major difference in the first half was when Ashante Jones got into the ball game, as we talked a little bit about earlier, Jones did not start the game for whatever reason. You know, we don't we don't know if it was disciplinary reasons or whatever. But Columbia City jumped out to the eight nothing lead, and then Jones got in the ball game, and right away you could see a total difference from the North Side Ball Club. They had more energy. They were getting better looks at the basket. They were more aggressive. So obviously, Andy it was huge for North Side to get Jones in the game, and he ended up having a very good first half. I was very impressed with his athleticism. He can handle the ball. He can drive the basket. He can shoot from outside, so I was obviously very impressed with Jones. I thought that was big to get back, to get him back in the ball game, Andy. Yeah, I definitely ignited. There's no doubt about it. There was a change after he uh, got in, and uh, yeah, he was out uh, the first I don't know three, four minutes of that. And, yeah, it was. Uh, he came in uh, with the fire, so to speak, and uh, Northside kind of took off from there. And uh, uh, we'll still continuing uh, to wait on our statistics as the uh, dance team revs things up here. I guess that's better than the band blaring in our ears. I they're agree. Right I agree. Here. I totally agree. Not that they're a bad band. They're excellent, but uh, they're, we're about right in the band, if you, if you can believe that. As, uh, I don't know. Uh, they stuck us uh, very close proximity to the uh, band, uh, so we'll have to uh, deal with that if they start playing. You might hear them well. You probably already have. So, uh, We'll see as time goes along, and uh, don't forget Lady Eagle basketball comes up tomorrow night back at Don Weeks Gymnasium, a big one, the NHC opener against Carroll, as Carroll uh, struggling a bit at 2-3, and three. and of course Lady Eagle's off to a 5-1 start, so that should be a dandy, so get on out there, if not, uh, Tom Ressler and I will have the call of that one at about 7.40 uh, or thereabouts, and that uh, will be the first NHC game for uh, Lady Eagle basketball, and then of course the boys back into action Tuesday night at Cherubusco, the little short trip up Highway 205, that one's even shorter than uh, going to Whitco. Yeah, it is, that is, and Busco actually has several guys back this yeah. year, they uh, they have some pretty high expectations for their team this year, so traditionally the last several years Columbia City's put the hurt on Busco, but I think it should be a pretty close game on Tuesday night, Busco's, as I said, got several guys back, they're really excited about their season, so that should be... Should be a tough game on the road for the Eagles. So, uh, you know, the schedule, as always, with Columbia City basketball, the schedule's tough once again. You know, we're going to be playing some ranked teams from all different classes. And, you know, Andy, you kind of come accustomed to calling, you know, good games between good teams with the schedule that Columbia City plays, and it's not going to be no different this year. Yeah, you've got uh, way on down the road. Elkhart Central North for a couple of tough road trips, uh, both long road trips. You can about go to the uh, state line in northern Indiana for those. Of course, that'll be our first trip into North or North Ridge's uh, gym, and they have quite a uh, ceremony up there. Exactly, it's always a uh, it's a tough place to play because they yep. draw a lot of people and they're loud. Uh, I, know, I know a lot of our listeners possibly may have been at the uh, regional championship when we played at Northwood in 2001. Yep. It's kind of the same atmosphere at North Ridge. Uh, yep. You know, they, they will draw you know some of the Amish crowd. You know, they, they're big into basketball. And it'll yep. be a tough place to play for the Eagles, so they're going to have to go at North Ridge. We're also going to have to go, as you said earlier all the way over to at Elkhart Central up in the uh, big gym up in Elkhart Central with a lot of tradition there, so that's always yep. a tough place to play. And then obviously the conference is going to be tough, as it always is. So uh, obviously Belmont at Belmont is going to be one of the main games of the season. Yep. Belmont's going to be out to get us. We've knocked them off twice when yep. they've been number one the past two times they've came to Dallas and speak to an agent. So uh, Belmont's definitely going to be out to get us. We're also going to be playing Huntington North. and That'll be a tough one. Living in Huntington, you hear a lot about, you know, the Huntington Ball Club, and I've heard a lot of good things about Huntington's big gun, uh, Chris Kramer, 6'4", junior point guard, very athletic player, heard a lot of good things about him. So Huntington North is going to be a tough game on Columbia City's schedule. And then to kind of go down through the uh, conference once more, uh, East Noble's got a pretty good ball club this year. Coach Johnson's son's a pretty good shooter for them. they got very good guard play. That's East, that's East Noble. 
And then uh, Norwell, Ty Platt over there does a good job with the program. Right. So that's never never an easy game. He gets his guys to play pretty hard. So uh, obviously the schedule, once again, is going to be tough for Columbia City. There's never really a night where you can just show up and beat people. You're going to have to bring your effort every night, every game. So, uh, And we see the clock stopped again here at Bahia Arena as they uh, now have the fly car on. And that was preceded by the dance team. And uh, what? I think we're still waiting on some Yeah, they're still... Yeah, maybe he's had some. I don't know what the deal is. But uh, anyway, we'll uh, stand by. We're, we kind of uh, did a little bit of everything tonight. A little uh, pop of circumstance to go, of course, with the uh, dedication of the arena here to buy Hay, the legendary long coach from uh, 57 to 88 here at Northside. And, of course, uh, 10 sectionals, uh, 7 regionals, a state runner-up in 1965. And uh, by Hay, a very uh, highly regarded coach and uh was a golf coach here for a lot of years, too. So, uh, by Hake, uh, did a little bit of everything here at Northside. It was really, it was really interesting to hear Mr. Hay talking, you know, about Northside High School and some of the stuff they had at Northside High School. One of the things that a lot of people may not realize is that the Fort Wayne Pistons, the Detroit Pistons, before they were in Detroit, were actually in Fort Wayne, and they right. played over at Northside's old gymnasium. So it was pretty interesting to hear them talk a little bit about that. So obviously, you know, it's kind of crazy that the NBA actually had a team in Fort Wayne. Yep. A lot of younger people don't normally, you know, know about that. Right. So it was interesting. They played over at Northside High School. So uh, I think we got some t- statistics for you, and uh, Andy's going to run through those real quick. All right, we'll take a look as uh, Mr. Cohut brings our stats over tonight. And uh, looking down the Columbia City roster, Tyler Scheibley. He uh, ends up with six points and a half on three of six shooting from the field. Dan Schmidt, one of three from the field. He has two points. Matt Kaufman held scoreless, so three from the field. He only had three at uh, Warsaw. He'd like to see Kaufman get off the schneid a little bit. Travis Preston uh, gets two points on one of one from the field. Zach Coverstone, six of 11 from the field. Four of four from the free throw line for 16 for Coverstone. Uh, Bailey plays but does not score, does take a shot. Matt Curry also plays, takes a shot, but does not score. Schumann, the only other Columbia City player not to see action. Columbia City, 42% from the field, 11 of 26 shooting in the uh, first half. 0 of 8 from beyond the arc, Trevor, and we uh, alluded to that fact earlier. They're going to have to start doing that to loosen up up things. And 4 of 4 from the charity stripe, all those belong to Zach Coverstone, of course. And uh, Columbia City out-rebounds north side. 14-13, 14-13, so uh, we get uh, one there. Six turnovers for Columbia City in the north side five. So uh, Columbia City, one more turnover in the Redskins. Now for north side side of the ledger. Deron Lewis, two of two from the field. He has four points. Deontay Eldridge, two of three from the field for four. Yvonne Lewis, one of two from the field for two. Dan McBride, all of one. It was a three-pointer. He has no points. Nate Hillary, no points. John Trowbridge, one of three from the field for two. Andrew Smothers plays and uh, misses his only attempt for no points. Ashante Jones, three of five from the field, one of two from beyond the arc, one of two from the charity stripe, eight points for Ashante Jones. Uh, Robert Littlejohn, two of four from the field for four points. DeAndre Falk, two of three from the field, one of one from beyond the arc, one of two from the charity stripe for six. Four north side, so uh, they've kind of spread it around. Deshante Jones with eight to lead the Redskins. Zach Coverstone with 15 in the first half to lead the Eagles. Yeah, after hearing the stats, there's several things that stick out in my mind. Number one is the play of Zach Coverstone in yep. the first half. 16 points in the first half, seven total rebounds. He's getting rebounds on the offensive end. He's getting rebounds on the defensive end. He's also had a block shot. So the play of Zach Coverstone really keeping Columbia City in it once again tonight. The other statistic that really stood out to me, as you commented on, Andy, 0 for 8 from the three-point line for the Eagles. And as you said earlier, we really need to start knocking down the three-point shot to open things up even more for Coverstone because I'll tell you what, Northside's head coach in the locker room at halftime, he saw those same statistics that we saw, and he's going to be telling Northside the double team Zach are going to be you know, sending two guys at him, sometimes three guys at him. They may even try to go to a zone to contain Zach Coverstone. Therefore, Columbia City's guards, Tyler Shively, Matt Kaufman, Dan Schmidt, are going to have to do a better job of shooting from outside to open it up inside. So uh, the two main statistics that really stood out to me, number one, the play from Zach Cole, 
16 and 7, well on his way to a double double here in the second half, and then the zero from eight from outside the arc. So uh, look for Northside in the second half, Andy, to come out possibly in a 2 3 zone. They'll probably also continue to press us because it really, really gets the up tempo game going for them, which really benefits them, gets us speed up a little bit. So I look for Northside to possibly start out on a full court press and then drop back into his own. Well, we'll see. It looks as though we're finally ready for basketball here. Like I said, they've had a little bit of everything with this one tonight. It's the 9 o'clock hour, so we owe you an ID. You're listening to WJHS, Columbia City, Indiana, 91.5 on the FM dial. Glad you're with us. Trevor Shively, Andy Thompson here at uh, Bay Hay Arena, the newly dedicated Bay Hay Arena here at Northside High School, the new gymnasium. Replaced the uh, old relic, which is now a media center. So here we go. Columbia City will have possession. Eight minutes are on the board. Columbia City trails at 32-26. And we're underway with Dan Smith. Northside will come out in the 1-3-1 zone as we talked about at halftime. And to get it off to Tyler Shively. Northside goes to that quick trap. Gets it off to Coffin Island. Down low, Preston. He has a shot on the baseline. Score! Travis Preston from 10 feet. Another great pass from Coffin inside of Travis Preston. And good job by Travis to knock down the 10-footer. And Falk's back on the right baseline. Can't make the move there. Traveling on north side as they caught Jones. Jones couldn't really decide whether or not he wanted to pull up for the jump shot or take the ball to the rim and got called for the travel. So we'll see if Columbia City can take advantage. They don't start the clock. They've had a few uh, snafus here tonight. Must be the new gym. They still don't start it. Coverstone, high right side, a little free time there. They start it. Preston up top, Kaufman high right. Shively down to the right corner. Up the wing now, Kaufman. Kaufman penetrates, shakes and bakes, can't get around his man, fell down, gets it nicely up to Schmidt, saves the bacon there, Schmidt in the lane, pull up, score, a little five-footer, good drive by Dan Schmidt, and what happened there, turn over Northside, Columbia step City, over the end line, going to get the ball back, Northside stepped over the line when they were trying to get the ball in bounds, and I'm going to go back to that last penetration by Dan Schmidt, good job by Schmidt to drive, and as you saw, Andy, the first look was the Coverstone. And Northside, I'm sure their coach talked to him a little bit about a halftime. You know, stick on Coverstone. Don't let him get any more shots. So Schmidt, instead of dumping it off the Coverstone like he did in the first half, just elevated and knocked down the 10-foot runner. So Meanwhile, good job by Dan Schmidt. Time out Northside. I think this is just more for Coach Mike Novell to beat the officials. He's letting him have it. Yeah, look, uh, obviously from our view, we can't really tell if they really did step over the end line, but obviously the official was right there, made the call. Now, I don't know what he was upset about, unless it was something on the previous trip. But anyway, 30-second timeout for I, North Side. I think the other thing that he may have been upset about was the travel call against Jones. Yeah. Right well, before that. So uh, I think it was just a more of a uh, beef at the official timeout. Exactly. But, exactly. Uh, but you'll have that. And uh, So, meanwhile, and North Side breaks their huddle. So, I think that's basically all that was, the yell at the official. But So, Columbia City now back to the floor. And they've got a chance to even this game up after traveling in. By six at half. Yep, yep. Only 42 seconds gone here in the third. Dan Schmidt to trigger it underneath the Columbia City basket in the cover stone. Backs into the lane, puts it up, floater it away. Oh, he doesn't get the roll. Good move by Coverstone, just get, couldn't get it to drop. Jones back on the right side. Three on the way by Hillary. That's way off the mark. Rebound, Columbia City knows. Off of north side and the north side bench erupts. And cover, or check that. Preston got whacked across the uh, base. He's Holding his eye. Yeah, there was a scramble for the loose ball, and it looked like Preston got hit in the eye, I think. It looks like he's going to be all right. So Columbia City gets it in. Preston's A-OK, and here we go. He's back mucking it up underneath anyway. He must be able to see pretty straight. Now Schmidt up top, down the left side. Penetrates, can't make the move now on the left side now. Down low into the middle. Kaufman turned around in the lane. Oh, Kaufman didn't get the roll. Boy, there's a lid on that basket. Jones back. To the left elbow. Run off the play by Coverstone, and into the corner he goes. Now up top, Lewis. 640 to go in the third. 32-30, north side. Lewis, high on the right side now. Jones blows up a long three. That's a brick rebound. Coverstone, he gets knocked down. Schmidt lovers it. Schmidt gets it out of the scramble. Coverstone put to the deck. He's up. Now back comes Columbia City. Tyler Shively, deep left corner. Now Coffin up top. He's all alone for three. Score! Matt Kaufman is off the schneid. Very big for Matt Kaufman to get a three-point basket early here in the second half. Hopefully, Andy, that's going to get him going a little bit here. Light the fire. 33-32, Columbia City. And what do we have? Foul away from the ball. No debris like, on the Yeah, floor. we got a piece of paper that flew out onto the floor. Like the uh, north side rowdies are getting a little carried away on the <laughs> south end. Yep. 
good good student crowd tonight yeah. on the north side. They got students kind of scattered all over the place, but uh, it's almost full in here. Yeah, old two hundred. We move up on the six minute mark through a quarter. They get it down low uh, to Lewis. Turn around on the baseline. He scores over Coverstone. That's a great shot by Lewis. Coverstone had both hands up. Lewis had hit the turnaround jump shot. It was a good effort by Lewis inside. That's Gerard Lewis. Not Kevon. We've got two Lewises on the floor. 34 33 Redskins. 5 45 third quarter. Dan Schmidt up top to Kaufman. Kaufman way up by the midcourt line. In the cover stone, top of the key, high left. Shively fought long and hard about a three, penetrates, lost the handle, he's double dribbled. Uh, they're going to say, yeah, they're going to say double dribble. They called the double dribble. I think Shively thought the ball got tipped out of his hand, but yeah, they uh, have. Yeah, disagreed. So here comes North Side. They lead at 34 33, and they don't start the clock again. Unbelievable. Okay. Now North Side, right side. Now in the middle goes Falk. He penetrates, loses the hand. All these somehow they put the city bench with palming. They're going to get it. They start the clock finally. Layup, no. It's, uh, Hillary misses it. Another That's rebound by Zach Coverstone. Good job by Coverstone to crash the boards again. Columbia City dodged the bullet there. Coffin down low. Coverstone. Check that. Preston, easy layup score. Great job by Travis Preston to run the floor. Coffin caught the ball in the corner. Saw Preston, saw Preston underneath the basket. Got the ball for the layup. Kind of impeded here, but. Uh, 35-34. Coverstone with a block. And a little John again. He misses it. North side another put back. No, but a Columbia City foul. So things get a little hairy here. Yeah, good effort again by Zach Coverstone. He got the block shot. The ball went back to North side. They tried it again, and uh, they end up getting a loose ball foul against Coverstone. That's his second foul. So, uh... Hopefully we can keep Zach out of foul trouble. He's doing a great job offensively and defensively. It's only his second foul, so let's just hope he doesn't pick up another foul here in the near future. Five minutes straight up to go. Coverstone second, team foul one. Third quarter, 35-34, Eagles over north side. Now high on the right side. Keep Lewis into the right corner. They can't make the move. Now Folks has a step on the baseline, goes to the bucket. Scores! Nice up and under. That was good penetration by Folks. Columbia City had decent help side there. It was just a good move by Folks, and he finished earning his basket. So north side by a point. As we move it back and forth, Schmidt up the right side. Shakes and bakes his way across the timeline up to Coverstone. Bounces it back to Schmidt. Stolen. North side. They've got numbers. Four on two. Into the middle. They go. Playoff score. And who got that one? It's hard to see that number. Jones down there. Yeah, it looks like Columbia City once again just needs to slow down a little bit and take their time. Shively penetrates quickly. Columbia City back. They're going to get it set up now. Schmidt. Schmidt penetrates. Kicks it off now. Shively loads it up for a long three. Off the mark. He hits the next. Long lead pass. Breakaway layup. Slam dunk. Cassante Jones. Once again, Columbia City is not getting back on defense. Wide open dunk for Ashante Jones. Columbia City has to do a better job of getting back on defense. Four minutes to go. Third quarter. 40-35. North side in the lead. Dan Schmidt up top. Works against Folks. Schmidt into the left corner. Now Kaufman. Kaufman can't get away from his man. Looks down low. Doesn't have a man there. And up top to Shively. The left baseline corner cover stone. What's Zach going to do? Tries to get around his man. They're going to call a foul. No further play on north side. It's a good job by Zach to be aggressive and take the ball to the basket. The foul was on the floor, but Zach was going through the basket. And that's what we need out of Zach right now. We're having a hard time the last couple possessions getting good shots. We need to go back to Zach. He's having a great game. We just need to get the ball to him in position to score. And the north side foul apparently against Trowbridge. Well, you see Trowbridge on the floor anyway. It's the north side foul. Cameron Bailey in for William Bay. He sets it up to Dan Schmidt with three and a half to go third quarter. Eagles trail it by five, 40 to 35. Schmidt works high on the left side. Penetrates around his man. Kicks it to Kaufman, deep left corner. He penetrates. Floater from the elbow off the mark. Rebound out of there to McBride. He'll hand off to Kevon Lewis. Off high on the right side. Lewis tries to shake and bake Bailey. Can't do it. Now left side to Shante Jones. Blows it up for three. That's short. Cover stone the board. Here comes Dan Schmidt. Across the timeline, high right. Kicks it up top. Now Cupstone way out there for the midcourt stripe. Hands back to Schmidt. Three minutes to the third quarter. North side by five. High on the right side now. Coverstone. Bounces it out to Preston. Preston tries to find Coffin. Almost stolen. Interior feed. Coverstone loses the handle. Goes up. Shakes the bank. His man off. Scores off the glass. 
Another great pass by Matt Kaufman to get the ball inside. Northside back quickly. Here they come into the paint. They lose the handle. Now up top there is the travel on Tevon Lewis. <laughs> to comment a little bit more on the last possession by Columbia City, I think they need to continue to go inside to Zach Coverstone. Kaufman made a good entry past the Coverstone. Coverstone caught the ball on the block, gathered himself, made a good move, and just had another open layup. 40-37 north side, two and a half down to go third quarter. Dan Schmidt across the timeline as Jones watches him on the defense. Kaufman high left. Cover Stone up top, high right. Schmidt beyond the arc, he looks in with the dribble around the key. Backed out to the midcourt line by Jones. Now Schmidt up top to Bailey, almost stolen. Bailey around one. Oh, and he threw it away. Here we go. Lewis off on a breakaway. Columbia City, they stole it. No, they're going to stay out of bounds on Columbia City, but nice defense by Kaufman. That time there was too much dribbling on the offensive end by Columbia City. Throughout the game, we've had pretty good ball movement, but that time we just had a little bit too much dribbling. 40-37, Northside gets it in now to Little John. He dumps it down low in the middle. They can't get stop up there. They almost throw it away, and they do throw it away. Kaufman, but he can't save it. Into the Northside bench. Two minutes to go, third quarter, 40-37, Northside. And some kind of a warning against the north side bench. I don't know what that's all about. The referee lecturing their bench. And still doing so. Maybe they get them for a technical. That would be nice. That would be nice. (laughs) Trevor Shively calling it early. (laughs) But no tech. Now it's McBride out high on the right side. Bailey tries to uh, get him. McBride sends down the middle, off the handle. But north side saves it. Kevon Lewis up top. He wears number one. Gets it down low into the middle. Little John shakes and bakes to the bucket and a foul on Columbia City, a block. Let's see who that foul is going to be on. Preston and Coverstone were both there. Coverstone, they got him for third. Yep. That's a very big foul for Columbia City. That's Zach Coverstone's third foul. Preston was there also. We were kind of hoping they'd give the foul to Preston, but it looks like they got Coverstone with it, and it also looks like he might stay in the game, which... With a minute 39 left, uh, I guess we might as well stick with him in there. He's pretty much all we've had so far in the second half. 41-37 as Robert Littlejohn converts the first free throw. Yeah, I thought maybe Coach Benedict might take him out to the final 139. He usually third. does at the end of quarters, but I guess since Coverstone's pretty much been the force when in the third quarter, I think we're going to leave him out there. So Littlejohn hits two of two. Columbia City going to inbound the ball. Northside goes with the full court pressure. Coffin's got it. They break it nicely. Schmidt races across the timeline. Lead pass ahead. Preston. Preston to the bucket. Oh, and he missed the, missed the bunny. Yeah, but he gets it back. Nice hustle, Preston. Down low to Coverstone, left corner. Coverstone up. Elbow shot for Preston. Scores! Travis Preston does a great job of catching the ball from about 15 feet, knocking down jump shots. He's a good shooter from about 15 feet. 42-39, now they get it down low on the baseline. Eldridge to the bucket, no further play at Columbia City foul. Good drive by Eldridge to uh, drive baseline, draw the foul. He's going to go to the line of two free throws. Redskins up 42-39. Looks like Shively and also Matt Curry are going to be coming back into the game. It would be nice to uh, see the Eagles. Get some outside shots to fall. Open it up inside a little bit more for Coverstone. And that was wide, way left by uh, Eldridge. One twelve to go in the quarter. The foul was against Preston, his first. So Coverstone still a three. Preston and Bailey to the bench. Curry and Shively back in. So the final one twelve of the third, apparently. 42-39 north side. They hit that free throw. 43-39. Press it all by the Redskins. They lead it by four. Smith's got to get it in. Gets it to Coverstone. Back to Schmidt. Deep in the corner. Smith almost lost the handle. Back down. They're going to call a north side foul. Columbia City, once again, we need to do a better job of passing to break the press instead of dribbling. That time Dan Schmidt tried to dribble out of the press, and he actually kind of got bailed out a little bit, Andy, with the foul call. So yep. uh, hopefully Columbia City can see that dribbling to break the press usually is not going to work against an athletic team like Northside. So they put it in play again as the foul is on the floor on Kevon Lewis, his first team first. And there's another Northside foul, and the uh, Bronx cheer from the uh, Columbia City faithful. 
the yep. north side, people not necessarily happy. Yeah, and, and when I talk about Columbia City passing to break the press, what I mean is they need to pass to break the press against a zone press. That time, Northside was in a man-to-man press, and Shively just took the ball, cleared everybody out, and brought the ball before. So Columbia City is triggered again. They don't put the foul up. So I don't know who they, oh, they throw it away. Northside, but stolen back by Kaufman. Big break there. Shively with it in the backcourt. Get it out of trouble, guys. Let's go. Shively. He's trying to shake and bake his man. Finally, a Northside foul. And that I, I think that's a great call because... North side, they're pressuring the ball, but they're also they're using their bodies up against Kaufman and Schmidt and Shively. And I don't know, there's some stuff going on, on the floor down there, Andy. I don't. Looks like North side coaches are getting in the officials' face pretty bad. I don't know if there's a timeout called or what. Well, there's a timeout, Columbia City. Thirty second timeout as Coach Benedict wants to settle things down with 52 seconds to go here in the third. Things getting a little crazy here. How about an underwriter, Trevor? McGregor Furniture in downtown Columbia City featuring Broy Hill Bedroom, Dining Room, and Living Room Furniture. Catnapper Recliners and Wolf Bedding are also available at McGregor Furniture in downtown Columbia City. Telephone 244-7352. Farm Bureau Insurance for all of your insurance needs. Give Dustin Pease, Lauren Fry, or Chuck Springer a call at 244-6179 or stop by their Gateway Park location just off Highway 30 in Columbia City. That's Farm Bureau Insurance at 244-6179. So 52 and 5 tenths seconds to go. Third quarter here at Bay Hay Arena in Fort Wayne. North side over Columbia City, 43-39 at this point. The Eagles really need to play well this last minute of the third quarter. It seemed like at the end of the first half, at the end of the second quarter, we kind of let things get out of control a little bit. Yep. North side made a little bit of a run. So Columbia City really needs to stay under control here at the end of the third quarter. Let's go, guys. And Schmidt to trigger. Long lead pass ahead for Kaufman. Intercepted by Northside. They steal it, Jones. With 49 seconds to go the other way. Into the middle. Now Kevon Lewis penetrates. Kicks it off. Wide open man for three. Scores! Dan McBride. So wait a minute. Is that McBride? Yes, it is. And it's 46-39. Columbia City back. Coverstone to the bucket. Scores off the glass. 46-41. 30 seconds, Northside races it way across the timeline quickly. Jones, right corner, tries the baseline. Around one, his man scores. It's going to be Eldridge. So giving up some bunnies here late, 20 seconds. Shively in the backcourt. Tries to get it out of harm's way. He's been ridden all over the place. Now he gets it up to Schmidt. We pass ahead. Coverstone has felt it on the play. Northside foul. Really up tempo last 50 seconds of the quarter. Columbia City needs to try to just... By Coach Benedict, Cam Bailey's going to come in for Zach Coverstone with only 10 seconds left yep. in the third quarter. And the reason they're doing that is because Coverstone has three fouls, and we don't want to take a chance by him picking up his fourth foul. So good move by Coach Benedict. Trust it for the three-point play. Yes, 48-44. And they get it in almost stolen by Sidley. Here they go with eight seconds. They don't have it across yet. Let him stand back here. McBride with it. Lee pass ahead. Hillary in the corner. Baseline runner. Trowbridge hits the side of the backboard. That'll do it. In the three. Here at Bay Hay Arena, 48 to 44, Northside over Columbia City. What has been a dandy so far? Yeah, great game so far. We talked a little bit about Columbia City needing to finish the quarter strong, and they did just that. They did well offensively. They got good ball movement. They got some good looks at the basket. And I think the main thing about the last minute of the third quarter, we kept Coverstone from getting his fourth foul. Right. So I wouldn't be surprised if Zach went right back in for the whole rest of the fourth quarter. He's got three fouls. It was good for Columbia City to take him out with the last 10 seconds so he did not get a fourth foul. All right, Farm Bureau Insurance. For all of your insurance needs, give Dustin Pease, Warren Fry, or Chuck Springer call 244-6179. Or stop by the Gateway Park okay, case. It's the top of Highway 30 in Columbia City. That's Farm Bureau Insurance, 244-6179. Coldwell Banker, your perfect partner. When you're buying or selling a home, remember your perfect partner at Coldwell Banker. It's Scott Darley. Telephone 248-9738. That's Scott Darley, Coldwell Banker at 248-9738. Star Financial Bank, a full-service bank with two branches in Columbia City and branches throughout Northeast Indiana. Star Financial Bank for both consumer and business loans at 248-6000. Family Support Services of Northern Indiana offers individual marriage and family counseling along with professional Christian counseling. Call Family Support Services at 244-0057. All right, we've got a hopefully a photo finish here for you. 48-44, we go to the final stanza. 
North side in the lead here at Bay Hay Arena. Looks like Cam Bailey's going to stay in the game for Zach Coverstone. Give Zach a bit of a rest so he can uh, come in and finish out the ball game. <laughs> All right, underway. North side. Columbia City comes out of the third quarter, starts the fourth corner, 2-3 zone. Kevon Lewis off high on the right side. Now Jones up top. Lewis takes and bakes around his man. Up to the Lewis along two. Scores! Wide open from 18. Good ball movement by Northside. Good job by Lewis to just catch the ball in rhythm and knock it down. 50-44 Northside. Shively with room across the timeline. Hits the streaking cough in the left corner. Up top now, Schmidt. Schmidt tries to penetrate. Kicks it off Bailey. Bailey loads it up for three. Off the mark. Rebound Northside. And here they come. Kevon Lewis, long lead pass ahead. And streaking down the baseline. And Shante Jones cut off. And he puts it up. Scores! 15 foot runner Jones. Can't let him get started. Oh my! 52-44. Yep. The north side with a couple quick ones there in the first minute of the fourth quarter. Dan Schmidt off high on the left side now. Kaufman with room on the baseline to the bucket. Scores the layup. Good drive by Matt Kaufman. We really need Kaufman to step up while Coverstone's out of the game and give us some offensive scoring. And again into a track meet. They leave a man down low. Eldridge to the bucket. That's just miscommunication on Columbia City's part. Left Eldridge wide open for the layup. I uh, give that to. to uh, Little John. Little John, that is. I'm sorry. The number's hard to see at that other end. Long lead pass ahead. Columbia City to the bucket. No, they're going to hold it up. Dan Smith up top now to Shively. 6.35 to go in the ball game. Bailey left corner to Kaufman. Kaufman can't find a man. Columbia City trails it by eight. Kaufman tries to make his move. Can't make it. Up top now Shively. Thinks about a three. Kicks it off. Cameron Bailey. No. Up top now Schmidt. Columbia City needs to get her under control here. They trail it by eight. Shively, high on the right side. Penetrates the arc now, backed off the play by Kevon Lewis. Back to Bailey. Bailey drives the baseline around his man, kicks it off down across the left corner. Up top, Smith. Smith, in the middle, almost traveled. Kaufman up top, or check that. Cameron Bailey down low, nice pass. Pressed into the bucket score. Great drive by Cameron Bailey. Just drives the lane, draw the defense in, just dishes off the pressure for the layup. Good job by Cam Bailey. 5.50 to go. 54-48 north side to get a man down low. Turn around in the lane. They miss it. They missed a bunny as it was Eldridge. Rebound out of there to Preston. Lee pass ahead on the right side. Shively to Schmidt. Left side Bailey. Further down the left wing, Kaufman. Kaufman looks into the arc. Guarded closely by Jones. Five and a half down to go in the fourth. Columbia City trails it by six. Down in the left corner, Bailey. Bailey around his man on the baseline. To the bucket. Kicks it down low. Stolen by Northside. Cam Bailey tried doing the same thing there, but that time Northside was ready for an intercept of the pass. McBride steals. Now Kevon Lewis. High right side. He loads up a long three. That's a brick. Rebound Northside. Bucket score. Little John. Columbia City did not block out there. Timeout, Columbia yeah, City. Coach, Coach Bennett's going to call a timeout, and the main reason he's going to call this timeout is to get Zach Coverstone back in the ball game. The last defensive possession for Columbia City, Northside took a long three, missed it, and then Northside got the offensive rebound. While Coverstone was out of the game, we had Cam Bailey in the game for Coverstone. When Cam Bailey played well, but he's not 6'7", like Zach Coverstone is. Northside had the height advantage. So Coach Bennett, good timeout to get Coverstone back in the game. All right, I'll talk to you about some more underwriters. Family Support Services of Northern Indiana offers individual, marriage, and family counseling, along with professional Christian counseling. Call Family Support Services at 240057. Come see the exciting new General Motors, cars, trucks, vans, and sport utilities at Thompson's Lily County Motors, Highway 30, Columbia City. Thompson's and General Motors, proud supporters of Columbia City Sports for a long, long time. Myers Tyson, Hockemeyer McNabb, the attorneys at law. We make it our business to provide legal services to individuals and businesses of Whitley County from offices in downtown Columbia City. That's my Tyson, Hockemeyer, and McNagney, attorneys at law. If you have a legal concern, make it our business. Contact an Horizon real estate agent for all of your real estate needs, residential, commercial, appraisals, and relocation. Call toll-free 1-800-853-5916 or 248-8961. Serving the Whitley, Allen, and Noble County areas, Horizon Real Estate. All right. Thanks, Trevor, and thanks to the rest of the underwriters. A part of this one here tonight at Bay Hay Arena in Fort Wayne, Northside High School. Columbia City out of the timeout with 5-10 to go in the ball game. They trail at 56-48. It's been a game of runs, really. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. Very up-tempo game so far. Dangerous pass. They get it into Kaufman. Back to Schmidt. Got to make it work. Get it across the midcourt stripe. Schmidt in trouble. Gets it off to Kaufman. Now they get it across. High on the right side. Kaufman penetrates into the lane. Kicks it off. Cover stone. Up top they reset. Under five minutes to go in the ballgame. 
Smith off to Shively, high right. Shively up top, Preston, top of the key. What's Preston going to do? High on the left side, they throw it away. No, it's tipped by north side. Yeah, it was tipped by north side. Travis Preston trying to get the ball of the other day. Schmidt was tipped by north side. Possession is going to be back to Columbia City. Smith the trigger in front of the Columbia City bench. Gets the deep left corner, Kaufman. Can't get the shot off. Kaufman with the dribble. He loads it up for three. Well short. Rebound out of there to north side. North side, here they go. Kevon Lewis in the middle, down low. A man to the bucket, layup short. Deron Lewis gets too many bunnies up. They're down by 10. North side's biggest lead of the night. 4.25 to go. And Columbia City, Preston with room on the right, left baseline. Check that. Ooh, dangerous pass. Kaufman has a free throw line jumper. Doesn't get the roll. Rebound. Cover still. Rips it away from his man. Scores the layup. Great job by Zach Coverstone. Pretty much what he did there. He just kind of said, well, if they're not going to give me the ball inside, I'm just going to have to get the offensive rebound and do it myself. So good job by Zach Coverstone. 58-50. A man on the baseline. Streaking down the middle. They score. They call Coverstone over. No call or Preston over. And they give him the bucket. 60-50. to Holy smoke. Here we go, Schmidt across the timeline, being ridden all the way up. Now he gets away from his man, now back to Preston, back to Schmidt. Top of the key, 345 to go, Columbia City down by 10 again. Into the right corner now, Shively. No further play, a loose ball foul on north side. Yeah, and Jones is really getting physical with Schmidt. Schmidt's doing a good job of holding his own, and that time Jones just did a little bit too close to the official, and the official caught it on him. Redskins at their sixth foul, so the next foul, Columbia City is going to be in the bonus. Substitution for north side. Looks like Robert Littlejohn's back. I'd really like to see Columbia City try to get the ball inside the Coverstone this possession. So Columbia City's ball underneath their own basket. Ball out of bounds. Smith sends it into Coffin. Left wing. Coffin penetrates. Knocked off the play. Stolen. Kevon Lewis. All the way in. They miss a bunny. Coffin rips the rebound down. And he's knocked off the play. A north side foul. Offensively, that time, you know, I just got done saying we need to bo- get the ball into Zach Coverstone. That time we just had a little bit too much dribble, and we ended up turning the ball over. We just need to get good <laughs> ball movement, pass the ball around the perimeter, and try to get some post speeds into Zach Coverstone. Northside is going to go back into the – actually, we're going to be in the 1-1, and Matt Coffin is going to go to the line, who is one of our better free throws. He hasn't been to the line a whole lot so far this year, Andy, and a lot oh. of that's because he's been relying a lot on three-point jump shots, but uh, it's nice to see Matt get to the line. And we desperately need him with 3.32 to go, and trailing at 60 to 50. As uh, Coffin will move to the charity stripe. Right here in front of us. Coffin scores 60 to 51. Columbia City down by nine. Don't be surprised if Columbia City comes out in a full court press if Coffin makes the second free throw. All right. We'll see. Coffin loads it up again. Good. And they're gonna, they are. They're going to be yep. in a 2-2-1 zone press. And to get it across the timeline, no Kevon Lewis. 3-25 and counting, fourth quarter. Columbia City trails by eight. Right corner on the baseline making the move down there. Jones can't get the shot off. Check that. It's Jones up top. Those numbers are really hard to pick up on that other end. And here's Jones. Off on the left side now, Lewis. Kevon Lewis. And they lose the handle. Jones almost. He did. He stepped out of bounds. Good job by Dan Schmidt to get good ball pressure on Jones and just kind of lost out of the bounce. Now Columbia City is going to have to break this press. The north side is putting on. They're going to have to get the ball down. They're going to have to get a good shot with only three minutes left down by eight points. They get it into Kaufman. Lead pass to Preston. One man to beat, but he's not going to be able to beat him. He'll back it out wisely. Down low in the corner to Schmidt. Schmidt with the dribble out of the left corner. Penetrates the paint. Knocked away from behind. And it'll be Columbia City's ball with 2-5-7 to go. Good defense by Northside there. Schmidt tried dribble, dribble towards the middle of the floor. Ended up just getting it bat out of bounds. Columbia City's going to take the ball out of bounds. Hopefully they can get the ball inside the cover zone, maybe just possession. Dively up top. And to Schmidt. Columbia City needs some points quick. Off high on the left side. Dan Schmidt penetrates. Gets cut off on that left wing. All the way up top, Coffin. Coffin around one. He's backed off. And now Shively high right. Coffin up top. Coffin. High on the right side, kicks it to Shively, right corner, he penetrates, kicks it off to Schmidt up top, that's stolen. Here they go, breakaway, Ashante Jones scores the layup. Great anticipation by Ashante Jones to step in front of the pass for Shively, took it the other way for the layup. Coffin back, that Coverstone loads it up for free, scores! Coverstone stepping outside the arc and knocking down the three-point basket. 62-55, 62-55, over and back, north side. Okay, now Columbia City really needs to take advantage of that turnover. They really need to score on this possession. We're down by seven points with two minutes 
16 seconds left. We really need a basket this quarter. As I've been saying all night, it'd be great for him to go back inside or outside, I guess, now to Coverstone. 62-55. Columbia City trails it by 7, 2 10 to go. Dan Smith across the timeline. He's getting ridden hard by Jones. No call. Up top. They get it off to Shively. Shively almost lost the handle on that one. A north side foul. And the Bronx cheer goes up from the uh, 80. And that's a big foul. Shively's going to go to the line to shoot a 1-1, one one, I believe. Yeah, it's the eighth yep. foul on the Redskins. So Shively's going to go to the line and shoot the 1-1. One one. If Shively knocks both these down, Andy, Columbia City will most likely set back up in their 2-2-1 two, two, full-court press and try to get another turnover for it. So 2 4 on the clock, 62-55 north side. Shively lets it fly. Good. 62-56. Columbia City within six. Sophomore Tyler Shively will have another one. As the north side bench is uh, pretty close to a technical. Mike Novell has really yeah, been ripping his. Shively again, 62-57. Here goes north side. They're going to get it across quickly. Kevon Lewis lead pass ahead into the paint. But they're going to kick it back out. Little basis being shown by North Side. Kevon Lewis is going to hold it with 155. He backs up the mid-court strike. We've got to pressure the ball right now with only a minute 50 left. Got to put good ball pressure on. Now McBride kicks it off and Shante Jones, a blocking foul on Shively. Shively did a good job of trying to draw the charge on Jones. That's not a bad foul. I believe that's only his third foul, so he's not in any serious foul trouble. However, he just didn't quite get there and get his feet set, so that's the foul on Shively. It was a good effort, though, to try to draw the charge. Benedict was traveling. Meanwhile, he doesn't get it. The foul of the fourth on Columbia City it goes against Shively, his third. And north side out top with 1.42 to go. They lead it by five over Columbia City. Almost stolen by Schmidt. Shively out on his man, which is McBride. Now they hit it off. Stolen by Schmidt. Great defense by Dan Schmidt. He's going to throw it ahead. ahead. Shively knocked down and a north side foul. No, they're going to call that. Uh, they are going to call that on north side. Are they going to call it? They certainly aren't going to call it on Shively. I hope not. Yeah, I think you're right. That's a north side foul. Holy Shively's going to go to the line and shoot a 1-1. One one. That play started with the defense from Dan Schmidt. Yep. Great defense from Dan Schmidt. As I said earlier, Columbia City really needs to pressure the ball this late in the game, being down by several points. We're down by five points. We need to continue the ball pressure. Dan Schmidt got the steal through the head to Shively, and he was held while he was going towards the ball. So he's going to get one and one, and we got a timeout right now. He was more than held. He was close one. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. anyway uh, boy, what a game this has been tonight here by Hey Arena. Cine, how you doing? All right, we'll just tell you all of our underwriters what we've got a chance at this point. The Drinker Furniture, Farm Bureau Insurance, the Rise of Real Estate, Myers Tyson, Akamar, McDagney, Attorneys at Law, Thompson General Motors, Family Support Services of Northern Indiana, Star Financial Bank, and Coldwell Banker. And, uh, Trevor, uh, we're not out of this one yet. No, we're not. one to go. We're right here. We're yeah, we, uh, the Eagles are going to continue to play hard throughout the fourth quarter. They've had some bad breaks for them so far. We've missed some shots from the perimeter. However, Zach Coverstone having another good half, playing well in the second half. Tyler Shively, as we already said, is going to the free throw line to shoot a one and one He was fouled after the steal from Dan Schmidt. And he's a very big free throw for two reasons. Number one, to put the points on the board, close the gap for north side. Number two, if Shively makes the second free throw, Columbia City is going to have an opportunity to set up in their 2-2-1 press. It's kind of giving north side some problems. So uh, hopefully Shively can knock down both these free throws. We can get set in our defense and hopefully get another turnover, Andy. We'll see what happens. If we've got north side a little bit on their heels, maybe uh, we can get her done here. After being down 10 just uh, about a minute yeah, and a half yeah. ago. One in the bonus for sophomore Tyler Shively. He hit a couple of last trips. See if he can do it again. Shively lets it fly. Good. 62 to 58. 131 on the clock. Shively, hopefully he can get another one here, and uh, they'll set up that press. Trying to force him into a steal. Possibly Shively fires again. 62-59. They get it in. They're going to let him come down. Yeah, it looks like Columbia City is going to back up into a 1-3-1 half-court press. All the way out top, they have a double team gone, and McBride can't find a man. Now he lobs it across. Now they got a man wide open in the corner, but they don't shoot. Northside showing some patience. The shot they throw all the way up top, minute 15. And down low, they get a man. They lose a man to the bucket. Score! Basket counts for okay. the foul. Now, what happened there was Columbia City was in the 1-3-1 zone, and what needs to happen when the ball is on the opposite side of the floor, 
The opposite wing player needs to drop. He needs to drop down underneath the basket. And that time it was Zach Coverstone's job to drop down underneath the basket. That time he was a little bit late getting there. And Northside ended up with the basket and the fourth foul against Coverstone. That's a very big play for Northside. And a free throw for a three-point play. Good. 65-59 gives a three-point play to Little John. A minute nine for the Eagles. They're going to get some out. Smith across the timeline. Hey, up top, and he needs help quick. He finally gets it off the press. And down a little cover stone to the bucket. Lamp score! 65-61. Northside's going to slow it down. You're going to have to pick him up. 55 seconds. Preston's going to pick his man up the timeline. They get it off to Jones. Check that. That was uh, McBride. And he almost threw it away, but a Columbia City foul of 46 and 8 tenths seconds left. It's going to be on Dan Schmidt, and that's only going to be Columbia City six foul. So Northside not yet in the bonus, but um, looks like pretty soon we're going to find out whether or not Northside can knock down pressure free throws. Yep. I'm sure Columbia City will foul quickly, obviously. Yeah, they're going to go for the steal. If they can't get the steal off the inbounds, they're probably going to foul. So to trigger in front of the Northside, uh, they get it down low. They go to the basket. Oh, my. Reverse underhand layup. Great move by Jones. He got the ball on the block. He had the uh, smaller Matt Coffin arm, and he made a great reverse layup. 37 seconds. 67-61. Schmidt all the way up top. Needs help. Finally gets it off to Coffin. A deep left corner. Preston loads up a three. Off the mark. Rebound north side. And that's going to about do it. That'll be it for Coverstone with 25 seconds, because I think he committed the foul. Good look at the basket by Travis Preston. Now, it was kind of uh, interesting on that possession. The last two possessions, Northside came out in what was kind of a 2-2-1 half-court trap. It was very interesting. Uh, they were putting a lot of pressure on the Eagles. Columbia City had a good look at the basket, just couldn't get the ball. And as you said, that's going to be Zach Coverstone's fifth foul. But well, what a game for Zach Coverstone. Are they going to call they, it on? They give it to Schmidt. Well, I guess they break. gave it to Dan Schmidt, so a break for the Eagles. They trail by six to 25 seconds. This one could pretty much ice it. Yeah. Good. 68-61 as uh, McBride hits the free throw. So Columbia City, a good effort to get right back in at the end, but it's going to fall short. Got into a little bit of a track meet at times, yeah, but I think yeah. it cost them. And they missed that free throw. Northside, the loose ball as they go over Coverstone. Coach Benedict went over the back. He's not going to get it. Northside dribbling the clock out, and they're going to foul. He finally Coverstone does for 16 seconds, and... Uh, That'll be it for Coverstone. Yeah, they, that's Coverstone's uh, fifth foul. And it's kind of interesting on that one. Northside's coach was calling for an intentional, but there was no chance that was an intentional foul. Coverstone clearly going for the ball. But uh, Coverstone, that's his fifth foul. Great game by Zach. Once again, one of the you know one of the main bright spots for Columbia City tonight. And uh, Northside's going to go to the line with a seven-point lead with 16 seconds left here in the fourth quarter. The Eagles just couldn't get over the hump here in the uh, second half. Just uh, down six and a half, and they uh, get, yeah, get you, close. Or yeah, get as as you said, you know earlier, Andy, you know it kind of got into a little bit of a track meet, which is totally not what we wanted to do. Uh, the up tempo really, really hurt us. You know, it's a very athletic north side team, and a lot of times, you know, the up tempo we couldn't get back on defense, and they did a good job. Yeah, and it looks like north side's going to call timeout. Benedict's going to have a save of the official, rather academic at this point, but he wants his point made that uh, he thought it was over the back down there. And I think I don't think Coach Benedict has really enjoyed seeing the beha- behavior of Northside's head coach tonight. That time he oh. kind of, Northside's head coach ran out onto the floor. I don't know if you caught it or not. He ran out onto yeah. the floor and was jumping up and down calling for a timeout. Now, I don't. I, I don't, I don't even know who this Northside coach is. You know, he hasn't been there that long, so it's not like he's been here 30, 35 years where he can kind of demand that kind of respect. But um, yeah. he's asking for it. So uh, Coach Benedict probably didn't, doesn't like seeing that too much. Mike Novell in his fifth season here at Northside. So Columbia City breaks the huddle, and they're uh, down by seven with 16 seconds. So uh, Northside will be at the free throw line in the person of Kevon Lewis. Looks as though Northside's going to go to one and one, and Columbia City will drop to one and two at this point. Devon Lewis fires the free throw. Good. Northside shooting free throws pretty well. They struggled. Yeah, they have. They, year. They've shot well from the foul line tonight, and we're going to. I mean, we got to give Northside credit. They've played well. You know, they they've done their job of being up pace. You know, they're playing fast, and that's what they need to do against teams like Columbia City. That was no good. The foul on the rebound on Northside. Coach Nobel's hot now. 
but his brother, I don't know why he's so upset. I mean, 14 seconds, they're going to win. Yeah, I don't I don't understand a lot of his reasoning in this fourth quarter. He's been on the floor several times, yeah. and the officials have just kind of put up with it. And as I said earlier, you know, he hasn't been around that long, so it's not like they really need to respect him a lot. So uh, kind of been disappointed with his behavior so far. But uh, I will say one thing, Columbia City always, you know, the Columbia City fans always have – been proud of Coach Vanek and his behavior on the bench, and he's done well tonight. It's just kind of interesting watching Northside's coach. Yeah, he's been kind of a sideshow in itself. Exactly. So Preston to the free throw line, doesn't get the roll. Let me say he shot pretty well from the free throw line tonight. When they have been there, it has not been much. A lot of that comes from just selling from outside jump shot. Right. We need to go to the basket a little bit more and get those foul lines down. So Preston will try it again. Fire scores. 69-62, and Northside has it in to Kevon Lewis. 12 seconds. Cross time line, he goes. And they lose the man down low, but they're not going to go for a troll bridge into the corner. Jones with four seconds up top, and that's going to do it. Northside wins on by a night. The two coaches shake hands. 69-62, your final. Columbia City falls to Northside here tonight at by Hay Arena. So stay with us for post-game activities as we're getting pretty late here tonight. And uh, we'll talk to you about some underwriters here, and uh, we'll get some stats your way, and I would imagine Coach Benedict later. Coldwell Banker, your perfect partner when you're buying or selling at home. Remember, your perfect partner at Coldwell Banker is Scott Darley. Telephone 248-9738. That's Scott Darley and Coldwell Banker at 248-9738. Star Financial Bank, a full-service bank with two branches in Columbia City and branches throughout Northeast Indiana. Star Financial Bank for both consumer and business loans at 248-6000. Family Support Services of Northern Indiana offers individual marriage and family counseling along with professional Christian counseling. Call Family Support Services at 244-0057. Come see the exciting new General Motors cars, trucks, vans, and sport utilities at Thompson's Whitley County Motors, Highway 30, Columbia City. Thompson's and General Motors, proud supporters of Columbia City Sports for a long, long time. Myers, Tyson, Hockmeyer, and McNabney, attorneys at law. We make it our business to provide legal services to individuals, and businesses of Whitley County from offices in downtown Columbia City. That's Myers, Tyson, Hockemeyer, and McNagney, attorneys at law. If you have a legal concern, make it our business. Contact an Horizon real estate agent for all of your real estate needs, residential, commercial, appraisals, and relocation. Call toll-free 1-800-853-5916 or 248-8961. Serving the Whitley, Allen, and Noble County areas, Horizon Real Estate. Farm Bureau Insurance. For all of your insurance needs, give uh, Dustin Pease, Lauren Fryer, Chuck Springer. Call 244-6179 or stop by the Gateway Park location. Just off Highway 30 in Columbia City. That's Farm Bureau Insurance, 244-6179. And McGregor Furniture in downtown Columbia City, featuring Broy Hill Bedroom, Dining Room, and Living Room Furniture. Cat and recliners and wolf bedding are also available at McGregor Furniture in downtown Columbia City. Telephone, 244-7352. So uh, thanks to all those underwriters. They're a part of this tonight. Long night here at Bay Hay Arena. The yeah, it was. It was, a, you know, it, was a, it was a nice night. It was nice to see the uh, new gym dedicated. Obviously, we would have, we would have liked to uh, spoil the spoil dedication the party. tonight for the Redskins. But, hey, you know, the Redskins, they came out. They played inspired. They played with good energy. They played hard. And the main thing that Northside did tonight that pretty much carried them to the victory was keep the game fast and up-tempo. Yep. And I think the speed of the game really hurt Columbia City. It kind of got into a little bit of a track meet. And that hurt Columbia City. Columbia City had a hard time getting back on defense because of the speed of Northside all across the board, not just their guards, but also their forwards, really ran the floor well. However, Columbia City, there were several bright bright spots for the Eagles. Number one, Zach Coverstone played a great game. We're still waiting on the final statistics, but uh, as we knew at halftime, Zach had 16.7 rebounds at halftime, and he had also had a good, good second half. He had a good second half, and he played very well. I also thought Columbia City played well offensively when they slowed down. You know, when they slowed down and got the ball into Coverstone, good things happened. However, several times in the second half, we kind of got really sped up in the uh, in the offense, and I just saw that uh, Zach Coverstone finished with 27 points. So obviously a career high for Zach, something to uh, obviously build on. And he scored those 27 points against a very athletic north side. Redskin basketball team. So uh, Columbia City drops to one and two tonight. However, 
Zach also had nine rebounds just on that out, so he was one rebound away from a double-double. 27 points, nine rebounds for Zach Coverstone. That'll be interesting to see uh, uh, Coach Bennett's reaction. I, I, I'm sure, as opposed to what we saw in Warsaw the other night, I would imagine he's got to be you know, a lot happier as far as uh, his team competition definitely. level tonight. Without a doubt. You know, even though the Eagles dropped the game tonight against the Redskins, 69-62, Coach Bennett, Coach Bennett has to be proud of the guys. You know, they played hard throughout the game, and they did compete. And that's something that they maybe didn't do very well at Warsaw. It was compete. You know, they did a good job tonight of just playing hard. You know, they came out all four quarters. They played hard. And I, I think Coach Benedict obviously will be a lot happier with tonight's effort than he was against Warsaw. You know, once again, you know, it's a road game. It's in a tough atmosphere against a very athletic team, which Columbia City hasn't played an athletic team so far. You know, Whitco and Warsaw, you know, they both played hard, but they weren't near as athletic as this Northside Ball Club. So, once again, it's going to be another learning experience for the Eagles, as we've already said several times. We have a lot of inexperience so far, and now, you know, these guys are going to be able to learn from these experiences, from playing on the road, and, uh, you know, they're going to go back, they're going to, you know, they're going to practice hard, they're going to be ready for Busco on Tuesday night, you know, that's a county rival, and uh, they're going to play hard once again, they're going to be ready to go. So, uh, Columbia City drops to 1-2 and two tonight at Northside, Northside moves to 1-1 one and one after yep. the, uh, after the loss to Muncie South down at their place, so, uh, 1-2 for Columbia City, 1-1 one one for Northside. Well, we'll uh, wait patiently on those statistics again as uh, they're down the way a bit from us, and uh, we'll uh, see as time goes along. Don't forget Lady Eagle basketball next up tomorrow night. Back at uh, Don Weeks Gymnasium, Carroll Lady Chargers come calling, and they're 2-3 and three on the season against the 5-1 and one Lady Eagles, so that'll be a big one. NHC opener for both schools, and that should be a dandy, so uh, make sure you're out there for that. If not, Tom and I will have all the action coming your way at about 7.40 or thereabouts for Lady Eagle basketball on Tuesday night. Trevor and I will move up uh, Highway 205 right in our backyard to Cherubosco for the Eagles and the Eagles. That's going to be a very big game for Columbia City. You know, they've lost two straight on the road, and once again they're going to be going on the road at Cherubosco, who, as we talked about earlier, Cherubosco does have some talent coming back this year, and it's going to be another tough game. So it's a big game for Columbia City. They need to be able to go on the road and get a victory in a tough environment. And uh, as we said, Busco has got some good players coming back, so uh, we're looking forward to Tuesday night. Yep, and hopefully the Eagles can get it back on track as they move ahead in this uh, yet young 04-05 campaign. So we'll see. And don't forget, after us, it's uh, obviously uh, going to be right after we're done tonight. Network Indiana's Indiana Sports Talk, of course, underwritten by Sprint. And Lori Wallace back at WJHS Studio tonight will uh, be running the board and bringing you all that action as uh, Bob Lovell will uh, entertain you and they'll have scores and uh, conversation with several coaches and uh, football in the basketball world. So uh, stay tuned for that. And that's underwritten by Sprint once again. And then, of course, we'll be back for Lady Eagle action tomorrow night. So uh, we're uh, getting close to statistics, I believe. And... Uh, We'll just have to add a little, a little more. Uh, yeah, one of the things we're going to be able to find out when we do get the statistics is the outside shooting from Columbia City. That's something that the Eagles are really going to have to improve on. And, you know, they have people in the right places. You know, Tyler Shively, Matt Kaufman, Dan Schmidt can all shoot the basketball, but for whatever reason we struggled a little bit early in the season. And, you know, part of that could be, you know, with Dan Schmidt and Tyler Shively, it's their first experiences playing varsity basketball. And I'll tell you right now, from my experiences, from – from just friends' experiences, and, you know, it's, it is very tough to go from the junior varsity level to the varsity level, you know, physically, mentally. I mean, obviously there's a lot more pressure. There's a lot of stuff that get, goes into that, and I think that as the season moves along, we will see Shively and Schmidt begin to knock down more shots, and uh, they will improve. As far as Matt Coffin is concerned, uh, I thought overall Matt played a pretty good game tonight. He played better defensively tonight, and I thought Matt also did a good job of feeding the post in Zach Coverstone. That's, he was one of the few guys that actually looked for Coverstone. Pretty much every time he got the ball, the first thing he did was look to pass into the post. And uh, I thought Matt did a good job of passing into the post. He uh, obviously did not shoot very well again from the outside, but I think that in the future, you know, Matt, Matt's a great shooter, and he proved that to everybody in Columbia City last year during the tournament run and during, during Columbia City's regular season last year. So I, I'm not worried about Matt Coffin. I thought he played well defensively tonight. 
and he, uh, he had four assists, and a lot of those came from uh, from throwing the ball inside the Coverstone. So I thought Coffin overall played pretty well. Uh, I thought Dan Schmidt played an overall pretty well game. He took care of the basketball pretty well. The one thing Dan's going to have to worry about a little bit is trying to not dribble through a full-court zone press. That's one thing that the whole Columbia City team needs to worry about a little bit. Northside ran a lot of zone press, and uh, one thing we tried to do is we tried to dribble a little bit too much in that. We just need to get better ball movement. But overall, Dan Schmidt played well. One thing that Dan Schmidt did pretty well tonight, I thought, was he uh, had a couple drives, had some penetration towards the lane, and he drew the defense towards him and uh, kind of kicked it off to uh, Zach Coverstone for the layup. And uh, Cam Bailey came off the uh, bench. Played pretty well. I thought uh, he gave it some energy. He had a good penetration and then a pass into Coverstone. He also played pretty well on defense. So uh, I think uh, the one thing that Columbia City is going to have to uh, get a little bit more from is their is their bench. You know, I thought I thought you know I thought Cam Bailey played pretty well. I thought Matt Curry played well when he was in there. But they're going to have to get some contribution from the bench. You know, if Coverstone gets in foul trouble, you know, if Shively, if Kaufman, you know, if they're not hitting whatever, we're going to have to have some guys step up from the bench. And uh, I think they will do that. But uh, once again, the star tonight, again, just as it was at Warsaw, was Zach Coverstone. 27 yep. points, 9 rebounds. He played great. As you said, uh, going to have to find some uh, other pieces of that puzzle uh, sooner or later. Exactly. So, exactly. Uh, boy, we are uh, really uh, being patient for stats here. We really want to thank Mark Parker. He's, uh, he's kind he's of bailed us, out. bailed us out a little bit. We don't have statistics right now, but uh, he kind of helped us out a little bit, giving us a uh, a little bit of statistics with Coverstone, the points, the rebounds, the assists with Matt Coffin. So thanks to Mark Parker for helping us out a little bit. That's uh, rebounds, 18 to 16 in favor of uh, Columbia City. And, and you know, like I, I thought we did we did do a pretty good job of rebounding the basketball tonight. Obviously, Coverstone was a big part of that, but you know. Coffin had several rebounds. I thought Cam Bailey came in off the bench had several rebounds. I thought overall Columbia City is overall Columbia City has done a good job of rebounding throughout the first three games of the season. I think that we're going to be fine throughout the season rebounding. I think Preston does a good job of getting in there and rebounding. So uh, good job rebounding tonight. It was just you know a lot of the problems were just not getting back on defense against the Athletic Northside team. And uh, we keep looking down the way here, and I, I see Coach Benedict uh, looking around trying to figure out how to get up here to. Uh, our perch. So. Yeah, he, we're kind of upstairs. you got to walk up a flight of stairs, so it looks hopefully he can find us and come on up, and uh, it'll be interesting to see what Coach Benedict has to say. I don't think he'll be too unhappy just no. because the Eagles competed hard tonight. They played a very athletic team in a hostile environment. There was a lot of things going on tonight, and uh, I thought they played hard, and uh, we do have Coach Benedict here, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and hand my headset over to Coach Benedict, and Andy's going to ask him a few questions. All right, well, we'll uh, see what uh, Coach Benedict has to say, and and uh, we'll get this on here. <coughs> All right, Coach Chris Benedict, welcome to the postgame show. Uh, 69-62 defeat here tonight. Uh, I think uh, from uh, our standpoint up here, uh, we thought the competition level of the uh, Eagles tonight was uh, really good. Kind of got in a little bit of a track meet at times, which probably wasn't uh, what we uh, wanted to do. But uh, I thought uh, we played pretty well considering. Oh, I, you know, I, I'm very pleased. I told him that I, you know, I enjoyed coaching the game tonight. I enjoyed watching you compete. I enjoyed competing with you. And uh, you know, I thought tonight we did a lot of really good things uh, on both ends of the floor at different times. And then obviously there were some times where we didn't. And, and I think we've got to learn from, you know, what was good to us, why was it good to us, and how was it good to us. And I thought early we did a great job of interior passing. It was Zach finishing stuff off and then, uh, you know, they extended their defense, which kind of rushed us a little bit. We started, you know, shooting some shots from the outside, which is shots that we're going to have to take and shots we're going to have to knock down. But at the same time, you know, if one doesn't go and the next one doesn't go, then we better make sure we get a couple reversals in before that happens so we can at least keep them from scoring at the other end. And I think that, uh, you know, we, we saw a lot of really good things tonight uh, competitively on both ends of the floor. It's just a matter of now learning about, what a good possession looks like, what a good possession against a quick team looks like. I mean, you talk about contrasting styles from one week to the next yeah. week. I mean, last week against Warsaw, was, you know, you couldn't cut anywhere. It was really physical. Tonight it was it was physical, but it was quick. You know, yeah. and it was hard to get the ball to where you wanted to get it to. And, and I, you know, I really thought Dan Schmidt did a tremendous job all night long of taking care of that thing and getting it from one end to the other end for us. And, and you know, I thought he just really done a great job of, 
making sure that we got the ball from one end of the floor to the other end of the floor. Now, once we got it down there, we got to make some better decisions on on what kind of shot selection do we have and, and what's the time of, of the quarter. And uh, you know, I think a lot of our shots tonight that we missed from the outside led to easy baskets for them on the other end. And you know, that's a hard thing to do because, you know, when, when they're playing and they, you know, they kind of play the way to where they want you to take it in there and shoot that shot and, you know, they invite you to do it. We just got to be disciplined enough to know if it's a good one, great, take it, get on balance and knock it down. If it's not, circle it back out and let's get into our half court offense and get Zach a touch. So, you know, I, you know, it, that's a tough game to play in from what we did last week into what right. we did this week. And I think that, uh, you know, again, it's, it's game number three for them. And I thought tonight they really, they not only played hard, they competed, they they learned a little bit about themselves. I think they learned more importantly about what it's going to take to be successful at this level. And I think they understood last week what happened to them, and I think they understand what this week happened to them. You know, this week they're hurting a little bit. Last week, you know, be real honest with you, they didn't compete hard enough to be hurt. <laughs> you know, they didn't they didn't feel that, and that, and to their own knowledge, they they knew that when they walked in tonight in the locker room and. You know, it's, it's, it's enjoyable to coach a bunch of kids that will continue to work hard and continue to come back. I think early the week, you know, Monday they were a little unsure of, oh, you know, it's our first time reacting to a 20 point loss with coach. How's this going to be in practice? You know, and I think they were a little on, you know, little pins and needles there for a while on Monday, <laughs> you know, and they kind of figured out that, hey, he's just going to come back and coach us. And, and Tuesday they got better. Wednesday they got better. They had a really solid week of practice. Led to a lot of really good things tonight. Unfortunately, it didn't lead to enough good things to get us on top. But, you know, there's things in this game tonight that we can take, that we can learn from, that we can become a better basketball team. Yeah, you held your own underneath the, uh, as well and uh, rebounds. Uh, pretty good job of the Eagles uh, against a pretty much uh, taller athletic north side team to hang thought, in there. I thought Zach did a tremendous job on the boards. Uh, Travis did a great job. You know, Travis may not have got very many rebounds, but Travis's guy didn't get very many rebounds. And I think he did a tremendous job of holding contact and blocking out and then our guards are going to have to take down in there and rebound a little bit and just get the ball out of there and i thought we did a a very good job on 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 the glass i was a little disappointed of the number of easy baskets they got in transition by us not getting back and getting our defense set you know and if you take you know you take three of those away you know we're in (laughs) you know we're we're, we're right there it's a close game and then i think they had at least two or three where you know the ball's going in the net before our guys are figuring out we're even on defense yet so you know, we tried to talk to them all week long about, you know, they're not really going to, they're not going to care if you score because they're going to get it out of the net and they're going to go. And, and yeah. you know, I think it, you know, it kind of sunk in a little bit, at the, you know, but uh, sometimes it's a little bit too late. You got you got to you got to go into the game understanding what's going to happen and, and uh, you know, adjust as that situation unfolds in front of you. But, again, tonight I, I really want to commend our guys. I thought they played hard. I thought they played the way we're capable of playing. You know, and at times they, they're, they're, their trust in the system will shine through, and then at other times their inexperience in the system shines through as well. And, and, you know, we're going to have to live with that for a little while. But at the same time, I think they know my expectation. I think they're starting to, to raise their level of expectation up to that a little bit. And I think you're going to start to see this team start to play really, really good basketball, and we're going to start to continue to improve. And, you know, it's all about in the non-conference season here, getting yourself prepared so you can play well in the conference season. And then, you know, ultimately, towards the end of the year, you want to play well in tournament. And, and you know, our, we've always kind of geared it that way. But you know, it's been it's been awfully nice the last couple of years to to win games like this. And and you know, we're going to be able to win our fair share of games if we continue to put forth that kind of effort. Uh, Zach Coverstone, another big effort tonight. He comes back off a 17 point performance at Warsaw. He gets uh, a double double tonight, uh, 10 rebounds and uh, 27 points. Gilman's effort by him. Yeah, he's, he's quietly becoming a, a really solid force for us on the inside, and I think that uh, you know he's just doing he's just doing what he's asked to do, and and he's executing, and he's and he's working hard. He's put a lot of time in on the summer to to improve his skill level and 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 to improve his lateral movement and. He's done a tremendous job, and, and I think our guys have done a really, really good job of looking for him and making sure that we get him the basketball. And uh, you know, again, you know, the one, the one adjustment I think we got to make tonight, take from tonight, is being able to go from a full court, you know, our press off uh, press offense situation, into breaking that press, and then understanding if we've got a layup, great. We got a good look, great. If not, then we got to make sure we run our half court off. Okay, well, uh, Terra Buff goes up next Tuesday night, uh, Coach Benedict. Uh, I suppose we can 
anticipate a, a tough battle, a uh, backyard rival there? Well, they've been playing really, really well. Uh, you know, each year they seem to, you know, we, we play them early in the year, and then, you know, you don't play them in the sectional anymore, so you kind of don't really watch right. the scores a whole lot. I mean, you just kind of are so focused in on the next opponent and that kind of thing. And, and you know, Coach Perlick has done a tremendous job with them. They've gotten better every single year. Uh, you know, I think now they've got a lot of veteran guys back that, that uh, you know, are really solid players and are really buying into what he believes in, and, and they're buying into that. And, you know, it should be a very, very good, solid contest at Cherubusco. So hopefully we can take some stuff from tonight, uh, you know, apply it Tuesday night, and hopefully we can make some, some minor adjustments, some minor things that will enable us to, to take the game a little bit deeper. I thought we took the game really, really deep tonight and had a chance to win. Uh, you know, with about three minutes to go, our guys kind of – started to figure out that, hey, we're in the bonus. We can score with a clock stop, you know, and it was kind of like it took them about two, three possessions to figure that out, and if we could have started that free throw binge a little bit earlier, we might have been able to, you know, gain us some more possessions and get back into that score when the, when the clock stopped, and I thought they did a really good job once they figured that out of really attacking the basket and being strong with the ball and, and, and getting to the free throw line. So, you know, Busco, again, has improved, you know, year after year. Uh, you know, they've improved greatly after we play them. I, I've obviously had tremendous seasons, and, and we, you know, it's a game that we're going to have to really prepare for. And, 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 you know, it's a short week, Saturday, right. and then you turn around on Monday, and then, and then you go play again. So, you know, it's, it's kind of nice that, to have that situation that you get, you know, you get a couple of days to prepare, but at the same time, it's not a long week. You get to get back in it, and they can enjoy, you know, they get back into this feeling tonight of I competed, I worked hard, and, and uh, you know, I want to get back into the gym so I can improve again. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Coach Benedict. Thank okay. you. We'll talk to you Tuesday night. Okay. Sounds great. Thanks. All right. Those are the comments of uh, Coach Benedict after this 69-62 to loss here at Northside. As he uh, said, very uh, uh, good game for Columbia City in the fact that uh, they competed well and did lots of uh, pretty much good, good things. Uh,